evening and welcome to this very special episode of NHM Live, where we'll be unveiling the winners of this year's prestigious Wildlife Photographer of the Year Award. Wildlife Photographer of the Year is the Natural History Museum's annual showcase of the world's best nature photography and wildlife photo photojournalism. From more than 48,000 entrants, our panel of expert judges have whittled down the competition to just 100 finalists. These 100 images form the basis of a new exhibition opening at the museum this Friday. These images shine a spotlight on wildlife photography as an art form, but with a strong conservation message, many of them, um, they challenge us to, to really think about our own relationship with nature. Now, our finalists are gathering in Hinsey Hall and the awards will be announced tonight. We'll be live streaming the award ceremony in its entirety. And along the way, we're going to be uh, discussing some of the images in a little bit more detail, and we're going to be speaking to some of our finalists as well. But uh, the, the ceremony is about to start, so, so it's, it's, it's less from me. I'm going to hand over to our host, Chris Packham, and we'll see you a little bit later on. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host for this evening, the award-winning television presenter, naturalist and wildlife photographer, and an unflinching ambassador for conservation and the environment, Chris Packham. Good evening, good evening. It's a tough time to be a Great Britain. If you turn on the news every morning, you may think we've lost it. But we haven't. We have great institutions here. We've got the National Health Service. We've got the RSPCA. We've got the BBC. We've got the big issue. And we've got the Natural History Museum. This is one of the finest institutions anywhere in the world. Not just the edifice, this magnificent building that we're in this evening, but behind those doors, it's tremendous staff. What an extraordinary privilege it is to be here this evening. And for me, a real honor to be presenting the Wildlife Photographer of the Year Awards. You see, this year they're celebrating their 55th anniversary at the Natural History Museum. And this set of awards is here to encourage the world's finest nature photography, bringing a global audience the best wildlife photography and storytelling that there is out there. Now, we are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction event due to our heavy human footprint. And there's never been a more vital time to shine a spotlight on our natural world. Each photographer here tonight has done just that, and you are going to see it without any ambiguity whatsoever. Through amazing dedication and talent, they'll remind us of the astonishing diversity of wildlife that we share our planet with. 
and what we stand to lose if, as a global species, we continue to ignore those warning signs. The competition places the incredible work of these passionate and devoted photographers at the heart of international conversations about conservation. Most of the images you'll see tonight have taken a huge amount of time, knowledge, and field skills in their making. The photographers have spent months, in some cases years, planning, researching, and executing these masterpieces. And mark my words, they are masterpieces. They go way beyond the aesthetic, all steeped in a strong narrative of com uh, conservation and environmental concern that so desperately needs telling, depicting an intimate and urgent need to protect the natural world. Tonight is about revealing and championing those stories and saluting the photographers that take part in this truly international competition. And I've got to tell you, as I've seen them, you will, are in for a real treat this evening. Are you ready, therefore, for a fascinating behavior unforgettable encounters and poignant photojournalism. Because there are animals and plants that you will look at tonight that you've probably never seen before. You'll go to regions of the world that you may never get to visit. And you'll rediscover the nature on your doorstep, which you have probably forgotten is even living there. Seeing these images is to start a visual and emotional relationship with, with the wild, one that grows stronger the more that you explore nature photography. It's a two-way relationship. If we lend our voices, our votes, and our action as a positive force for the good of the planet, then we can help to ensure that wild creatures and wild places continue to exist. An esteemed panel of judges began their hunt for these images by scrutinizing, and get this, 48,000 entries, rather them than me. It was no easy task, and it was one that came with great responsibility. This competition has a very rich legacy for producing the world's finest wildlife photographs and encouraging the world's finest wildlife photographers growing them sometimes from a very young age. Anyway, after lengthy discussions and deliberations, they have selected their top 100 images. And tonight, for the first time, we are going to be unveiling those winners. A little bit of a social media broadcast now for you. If you feel moved to tweet about them and about this evening's highlights, then please can you use our hashtag, which is WPY55. We are live streaming tonight, and we'll be sharing live content on the competition's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope throughout the night, too. So I hope you're all sat next to the person that you don't mind being seen with on social media. And you'll have to behave yourself because at least a certain part of the world is watching. And can you also please tag in um, NHM underscore WPY, that's NHM underscore WPY, and natural underscore history underscore museum in your Instagram stories so that we can all share them. Sharing is important. We're very fortunate to have come together here tonight to enjoy this spectacle, this celebration of this great work, but obviously we want it to have a, as wide an audience as possible, as immediately as possible. So please get onto those social, social media things. Now, the other thing I have to tell you to do, which is an unusual request, um, but it will turn out to be an important one, is can I ask you to please tuck in to your delicious and sustainably sourced food that's laid in front of you. This will keep you going throughout the four first 45 minutes whilst we take a look at some of our winners um, before dinner is served. Now, the reason for that is that if you just look at it for 45 minutes, then it will be whisked away before you get a chance to eat it because your dinner will be placed in its place. So, social media, try and be as active as you can without being rude to your table mates. Scoff that food down to make sure you're ready for your dinner. But before we move on, I have an enormous pleasure and a privilege as ever 
to introduce to the stage the director of the Natural History Museum, the one and only Sir Michael Dixon. Thank you, Chris. Well, good evening. It's my very great pleasure to welcome you here tonight to the Natural History Museum, where we are joined by the exceptional wildlife photographers of today, gathered from every corner of the globe. Never has this profound celebration of the natural world through photography felt more timely. We're experiencing an unprecedented world ecological crisis but we're also experiencing a greater awareness and focus on this than ever before. The world is waking up to climate change, but sadly our destructive impact on our planet is multiple and myriad. From biodiversity loss and extinctions, habitat destruction and pollution, to deforestation and ocean acidification, we are threatening Earth's survival systems. Our mission at the Natural History Museum is to drive even greater awareness of these issues and create advocates for the planet. From the children who visit our galleries to industry titans and international policymakers, we want to inspire, equip, and empower everyone to make a difference for nature. And nothing inspires more than the emotive, impactful images the photographers in this room have captured. The immediacy of every image ignites a reaction from a heart stop of surprise to a profound appreciation of the exquisite beauty of our planet. That's why earlier this year, we took Wildlife Photographer of the Year to the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, and we're delighted to be returning there in January. And tomorrow, we will be taking the winning images and photographers, as well as our researchers and scientific specimens, to number 10 Downing Street. By showcasing these evocative images alongside specimens from our collection, at Davos and number 10, we will be ensuring the natural world will be at the heart of discussions held by the world leaders shaping our future. Our ambition is to continue to share your work with the widest possible audience and decision makers around the globe. Something we couldn't do without the support of everyone here tonight. We're honored to co collaborate with you all in this celebration of nature. There are a number of people I would like to thank personally. Firstly, the chair of jury, Ros Kidman Cox, who expertly steered the judges, Helen Jilks, Let's give a clap at the end of the list. <laughs> Helen Jilks, Ollie Jürgen Leiden, Melissa Dale, Jürgen Freund, Kathy Moran, Paul Hilton, Tim Littlewood, and Theo Bosboom. <clears throat> Wildlife Photographer of the Year is generously supported by our long-term sponsor, the renewable energy company, Ersted. We are thrilled that Ersted is leading the transition to a cleaner, greener world that runs entirely on renewable energy. We're also excited to continue our partnership with Panasonic Lumix. They share our passion for creativity and photographic excellence and hope to inspire the next generation of natural world storytellers. Thank you also to our touring venues for hosting the ex exhibition. You help us reach millions around the globe. Finally, thank you to the photographers, the expert storytellers whose images speak louder than words and have the power to change the world. We're privileged to share your work. It is truly a force of good for the planet. Thank you, and I wish you all a wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Michael. Now, please welcome to the stage Ersted's UK Managing Director, 
Matthew Wright. Good evening. Um, this is one of my favorite events of the year. I love it because it reminds me why I do what I do, and why I work where I work, and indeed why Ørsted does what it does. The world has changed in the last year, and public awareness of climate change is building, as is a palpable sense of concern for ourselves, for our planet, for our children. But numbers, 1.5 degrees, 2 degrees, can sometimes seem like, well, just numbers. Tonight, we will witness our planet's astonishing species and habitats. But know that, for some of them, the difference between those same numbers, 1.5 and 2, could be the difference between life and death, survival and extinction. The world needs to cut global carbon emissions in half by 2030 to stay within 1.5 degrees of global warming. We are not on track. But there is hope. And a tangible example is that it's now officially cheaper to build new offshore wind farms than new coal or gas plants. At Ørsted, we supply enough electricity from offshore wind for over 13 million people globally. By 2030, we're aiming for 50 million. Society has solutions, but we must act now. I hope all of you here tonight will join me in using your voices and your platforms to call for that action. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. And as you point out, we have a toolkit of solutions, an arsenal of technologies and abilities to make a difference. We're just not implementing them fast enough and broadly enough. We hope tonight will give them some imp impetus and we see how critical our situation is and how much the species that you're going to enjoy depend on us to sort that problem out. Now I have the pleasure of introducing the professional imaging marketing manager from Panasonic Lumix, Mike Owen. Mike, please come to the stage. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Sir Michael, for this opportunity to speak to you all this evening. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is now the second year that Panasonic Lumix has been a partner of Wildlife Photographer of the Year and the Lumix People's Choice Award. And we are incredibly proud to be here. Photography is one of the most powerful mediums for creating awareness. It transcends traditional barriers to reach and impact audiences of all cultures and ages. We at Panasonic Lumix, like you, aim to push boundaries, break preconceptions on what is accepted or is possible for photographers. The entire Lumix team are here to support you, whether you are just starting your journey or you're a more seasoned professional. And it's great to see some, so many familiar faces in the audience this evening. It is, in fact, our duty to support you and the stories you tell through this incredible platform. With our friends at Wildlife Photographer of the Year, the Natural History Museum, and our fellow partners, Ofsted. Excuse me, I apologize, Matthew. Last year, I stood up here and said that Wildlife Photographer of the Year was one of the most important events in the photographic calendar. I was wrong. It is one of the most important events in any calendar period. The massive global reach means that this competition is a source of awareness, of education, of documentation across the world for our children and their tomorrows. Please keep on shooting. Do tell these stories because they do make a difference. They do have an impact. Good luck tonight to all of the photographers who are here celebrating being part of the competition and on all of your future shoots. Thank you from all of us at Panasonic Lumix and have a great evening. Thank you.
Okay, so here we go. There are going to be 10 categories before dinner and then eight categories after dinner, in no particular order at all. And for each category, you'll see all the awarded images and then the category winner. All of the category winners are then contended, contenders for the coveted overall titles of the Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year and the Wildlife Photographer of the Year. And we'll be obviously announcing those at the end of the evening. So, let's kick off with the Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition, displaying the extraordinary talent of photographers under 17 years old, all seeking their own visual voice and expressive styles. I'm told that the judges were amazed by not just their technical skills, but obviously the time that they'd spent out in nature, developing a deeper understanding and a respect for their subjects. It's their passion that's going to help bring about the real and necessary changes needed to protect the natural world in the future. There is absolutely no doubt about that at all. Our first category then is the 10 years and under. With such fresh eyes, young photographers find a new sense of wonder and delight in subjects that we might just pass over without a glance. Just a bug, just a bird, keep on moving. Yet for them, that flap of a wing, that burst of color, that silhouette is just the thing that sparks some magic. The photographers in this category captured behavior, environment, the sculptural, all with a fresh perspective that transformed the seemingly ordinary into something far more powerful. All of the pictures that you can see displayed behind me are those that we've awarded. But the image that stood out for the jury as their category winner is this one. I think a round of applause would be... You're quite a slow starting audience. It's going to be a tough night, isn't it, really? <laughs> on a warm summer's evening on holiday with his family in France, our photographer was in the garden when he heard some humming. The sound was the fast-beating wings of a hummingbird hawk moth hovering in front of a salvia flower, siphoning up nectar with its long proboscis. You can see that extended there in the photograph. With the hawk moth moving quickly from flower to flower, it was a challenge to frame the picture. If you've seen these animals, you know they don't move quickly. They fidget in an irritating fashion, to be fair. But our photographer managed it, capturing the stillness of the moth's head against the blur of its wings, a soft background which accentuates the bright red flower. Such a great action shot. You can feel the whir of those wings there. And was one that wouldn't be possible without quick reactions and an eye for composition. That the photographer was only 10 years old makes this doubly impressive. So please, with a more spontaneous round of applause. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, here from the UK, Thomas Easterbrook. I'd just like to thank everyone at the Natural History Museum for hosting such a brilliant event. It's been really inspirational to see all the, the great photographers out there who, who've succeeded in, in their industry, and I'm hoping to follow in their footsteps. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And because I'm an old lag when it comes to this competition, I've been attending it on and off since the mid-1980s, I can tell you, Thomas, that there are photographers in the audience tonight 
that I, as a younger man, saw as your age. And they've matured through, and they are now at the top of their field. So there's every chance that your wish will come true. We hope it does. And Thomas's will be the first category winner shortlisted for the Grand Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year prize to be announced at the end. Our next award is to the 11 to 14 year olds. The jury say this age group is often where the imagination and determination of young photographers really blooms. And this year is no exception. With a versatile and accomplished set of pictures from four different continents, displaying four very different compositions, portraiture, environment, behavior, and abstract, this is a very special set of pictures. And the category winner this year in the 11 to 14 year olds is this one. What a remarkable creature, and what a remarkable opportunity for us to be able to see it without getting wet and salty <laughs> on this autumn evening. Our photographer here was on an organized night drive in the Lemba Strait off of North Sulawesi in Indonesia, when in relatively shallow water over a sand flat, he encountered this 25 centimeter long big fin reef squid. Now, I've never seen a big fin. Hands up who's seen a big fin reef squid before. You show off. This is what we were saying at the, at the very start, wasn't it? We're going to see species tonight that we didn't even know existed. And, and they're extraordinarily beautiful. Anyway, this big fin reef squid, which appears to be displaying uh, a striped courtship patterns. Its internal reproductive organ, organs are glowing pink to further indicate its intentions. With no time to adjust his camera and strobe settings, our photographer instinctively composed his frame, capturing the glowing squid the two prey capture tentacles extended before it jetted backwards into the blackness, most likely to show those glowing genitalia to its potential mate. It doesn't say glowing genitalia on my, <laughs> on my screen. To take such a perfect portrait of a fast-moving skittish creature in an alien world requires a combination of skills, not least being a good enough diver to get out there on a night shoot in the first place. Now, the encounter may have been lucky, but the framing and lighting choices are deserving of an award. On that account, please welcome to the stage, all the way from New Zealand, Cruz Erdman. Good evening. I would like to thank my mother, who strongly encouraged me to enter this competition, as well as the dive guides, underwater photographers, and scientists, including my own father, who I've learned so much from. It is a great honor to be in this room with such incredible people who have used their skills to highlight both the beauty and plight of our planet. I feel fortunate that I live in a time where young people are taking their rightful place as the stewards of the world that we will inherit. I'm excited that I may be a part of this change through my photography. Thank you. Don't maybe part of the change, be part of the change. <laughs> Our final category in the young competition is the 15 to 17 year olds. You could say the images have just as much impact as those images coming up in the adult competition. These young photographers are taking their art very seriously, perfecting their skills and crafting their compositions. 
you can already see their technical abilities, their determination, and their personal vision. And these are all part of their emerging talents, which allow them to show their images in their full glory. Fantastic set. Must have been a difficult choice. But this year, the jury has chosen this photograph as the winner. Our photographer couldn't believe his good fortune when at first light this female Gallada with a week old infant clinging to her belly appeared. He was with his father and a friend on the high plateau in Ethiopia's Simeon Mountains National Park and on this day, a couple of hours before sunrise, the guide had led them to a cliff edge where the Galadas were likely to emerge. Shooting with a low flash to highlight the rich brown fur against the still dark mountain behind, he not only captures the sideways glance, but if you look very carefully here, you can see those highlit eyes of the inquisitive infant hanging beneath the female. Now, one of the judges said, there's a wonderful balance between the gelada and the environment, with the glint in its eyes of the mother and the baby, as well as a sense of purpose, pulling all of the elements together. It's a really super photograph. So, from Italy, Let's offer our congratulations to Riccardo Marchagiani. Hello, good evening. I just wanted to say that uh, I'm honored uh, to, uh, to be here in one, in one of the most important contests in the world with some of the best photographers of the world. So I just wanted to uh, say thanks to the, ju to the jury to give me the opportunity to be in this, uh, in this uh, wonderful city and uh, in this wonderful uh, museum. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Ricardo joins Cruz and Thomas on the shortlist for the title of Young Wildlife Photographer. And as I said before, the winner will be, be revealed at the end of the evening. Now, we're going to move on to the adult categories. That's the adult rather than the adult categories. Contending for the title Wildlife Photographer of the Year. And first up tonight is Animal Portraits. Now, a good animal portrait is so much more than just a close-up of any other animal species. It needs to reveal something about its character, and it needs to move the people who see it in some way. The intimate gaze of another species can, to paraphrase something that my mother would frequently say about photography, speak a thousand words. It's a very powerful means of communication. But of course, good composition, exquisite light, and the right moment are also essential elements when you're taking these sorts of photographs. Our judges feel that the winners in this group achieved that with tremendous impact. And so, again after deliberation, this year's winner is this photograph. It's a remarkable species. You're going to love what I'm going to tell you about it. The photographer was in the subtropical forest of India's Buxa Tiger Reserve in West Bengal, observing an ant colony when he spotted the odd one out. Count its legs and look at those palps on either side of those folded fangs. You see, looking closer, you'll see that this is a tiny ant-mimicking crab spider. And what's more, it measures just five millimeters long. 
Now, many spider species imitate ants in appearance and behavior, even smell, so that they can infiltrate their colony. The spider may want to eat the ants or their eggs or their larvae, and of course, it may want to avoid being eaten by the ants as well. And this particular spider, according to the photographer, seemed to be hunting. By reverse mounting his lens, he converted it into a macro capable of taking extreme close-ups. And here the lens was so close to this diminutive arachnid that he seems to have been able to see its reflection and it's raising its legs as a warning to itself in the lens that it can see there. The tight framing, the legs up, the little hairs highlighted, and the catch light in its eyes make this picture a winner. So please welcome all the way from India, Ripan Biswas. Good evening. Every creature, small and big, plays a vital role to the environment, but the small goes unnoticed. But I'm in love of the small creatures, and I am photographing them. Uh, it's about 10 years. Thank you, Natural History Museum, and all the judges for choosing my photographs. Thanks all. Okay, our next category is animal behavior, birds. Ferocity. Sweetness. Comic relief. And behavior. The photographs in this category that you're looking at cover all of the bases. There are raptors, songbirds and seabirds from the backyard to the deep woods to remote sub-Antarctic islands. The photographers have captured compelling moments that show the bird off in the context of their environment whilst also illustrating behavior in a new and eye-catching way. Coming in landing, sucking on icicles, something I've never seen before but then I can't remember the last time I saw an icicle here in the UK, actually, to be honest with you. Um, or mountain climbing. These birds are seen in a way as you probably not experienced them before. They are a super set of pictures. This must have been a tough call. But the winning picture, animal behavior, birds, this year is this photograph. What a photo. This is power, speed, strength, with an awesome backdrop which sets off this golden eagle magnificently. Now, high on a ledge on the coast near his home in northern Norway, our photographer carefully positioned an old tree branch that he hoped would make a perfect landing place for a golden eagle. I like that. He knows the perfect landing place for a golden eagle. Because curiously, they don't just pitch up everywhere. They do have perfect landing places, and he's identified one of those. But he went a little bit further. He bolted his tripod head with a camera to it, flashes and a motion sensor, and built himself a hide a short distance away. It's another thing that I like. Very gradually, over the next three years, <laughs> a golden eagle started to use the branch regularly to survey the coast below. What an investment. Great piece of observation, sets up the technical side, has the patience for waiting three years. And that three-year wait paid off because he's captured the eagle coming into land with its talons outstretched, 
poised for a commanding view over its coastal realm. It's an image with huge impact. And so to create such a shot is not just a technical feat, one that required all of that planning patience, but also the eye for composition. The jury reacted not only to the spirit of the photograph, but to that technical effort that went into producing it. And we'd like to offer, therefore, our sincere congratulations to Norway's Alden Rekardsson. Okay, um, dear jury, uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for me this is a very personal picture, as you mentioned, I've been working on this for two years uh, and I'm starting to feel that I know this eagle intimately. Um, it's also uh, precious to me because this is taken only a 20 minute walk from my home. That means <laughs> That is a very, like, low carbon dioxide um, <laughs> picture. Uh, only the only footprint here is from my breath, my sweat, and my swearing. <laughs> um, finally, um, it's also I hope this picture have an impact because um, recently the Norwegian government have put forward a proposal uh, to legally shoot out uh, golden eagles in certain areas um, to prevent um, uh, brew stocks of, of farm animals. And to me, this is uh, stone age management. And I hope this picture can contribute and stop this proposal. Thank you. Our next category is animal behavior in vertebrates. Now, this category excels at exposing remarkable stories. You'll be dazzled by this spectacular selection of the little things that rule the world, filling every available niche and role. And of course, their great abundance gives enormous scope for images of behavior that are truly wonderful. And the behavior this year spans everything from hunting mating and sleeping strategies to the creation of a temporary accommodation out of living bodies. All of these in incredible close-up. Now, they are a remarkable collection of photographs displayed, I'm afraid, too small on that screen for you at the back to be able to see them clearly, unless you came equipped with binoculars tonight. So when we later go into the gallery, to look at all of the photographer's work that you're seeing here, and you have a greater chance to uh, peruse it, I would draw you to look at these. Some of these are absolutely exceptional images. And the one of those exceptional images that stood out for the jury was this one. This one is entitled The Architectural Army. Over several days, the photographer tracked the colony of nomadic ants as it moved through the rainforest near La Selva Biological Station in northeastern Costa Rica. Now, each night, the ants would stop and build their nest. It's a, a bivouac. We call them a bivouac. And they house the queen and larvae, and they do this. They make the nest out of their own bodies. They create a scaffold of vertical chains. And if you look at the top right of the photograph, you can see those ants literally clinging to one another. Their interlocking claws on their feet allow them to trapeze, if you like, into a chain which forms a network of chambers and tunnels into which the queen and the larvae are moved for the night where they're nice and safe and secure. But one night, 
The colony assembled against a fallen branch and two large leaves, allowing it to make this cathedral-like structure, which spanned from side to side, to give you an element of scale, about 50 centimetres. Our, photography, our photographer gently positioned his camera on the forest floor within centimetres of the nest using a wide-angle lens to take in the environment. He was wary of upsetting a few hundred thousand army ants. <laughs> gently probably being the key word there. He says, you mustn't breathe in their direction or touch anything connected to the bivouac. I'm sure you can imagine why. The result was a perfect illustration of an insect society seen here as a super organism. It's an amazing sight, it's fascinating behavior, it's teamwork in action, it's a great photograph. So please welcome to the stage from Germany, Daniel Kronauer. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great uh, pleasure to be here among so many uh, photographers tonight whose work I've admired over the years. Um, your work is very important because, of course, it makes us see the natural world and its wonders in new lights. Um, I would like to thank my collaborator and former postdoc, Christoph von Bern, who spent a lot of days and nights uh, together with me in the Costa Rican rainforest studying these army ants. I would also like to thank uh, the staff at La Selva Biological Station who made this work uh, possible and who provide all the infrastructure uh, on the ground. And then finally, I would like my, to thank my wife, Julie, who's with me here tonight for all her love and support over the years. And thank you again for having me. Next up in our behavior categories is amphibians and reptiles. Now, these diverse and ingenious animals have been able to survive on our planet for many millions of years. Whether they are rare and exotic species from distant islands or everyday species you could find in your own back garden. In this category, the jury is always looking for active and interesting behavior that reveals something about these creatures, and these images certainly do that. Exquisitely beautiful, remarkable animals. But the winner, chosen by the jury this year, is this photograph. It's like a rave scene from the 80s, isn't it? <laughs> Every spring, for more than a decade, our photographer followed the mass migration of common frogs in South Tyrol in Italy. Now, these frogs emerge from their sheltered wintering spots and head straight to water to breed, usually where they find that they were spawned themselves. They, were, they return to what we call their natal ponds. Photographing them isn't always easy because although they're called common frogs, in many parts of Europe now, their numbers are in quite critical decline, a case being here in the UK. And that's principally down to loss of habitat. We filled in all of our farm ponds here. Those ponds that remain are often polluted and spoiled. And in some countries, again in other parts of Europe, disease is an issue, and in others, even hunting for the meat trade. But our photographer immersed himself in one of the larger ponds at the edge of the woodland where several hundred frogs had gathered. And he watched the spawn build up until the moment arrived for the picture he had in mind, soft, natural light, lingering, hanging frogs, harmonious colors, dreamy reflections, and the happy Mondays. Within a few days, the frogs had gone, and the maturing eggs had risen to the surface. It's a truly 
magical scene with great organic creations there, almost a stage set for some sort of performance art. And the more you look at it, the more you'll see in it. It's very certainly a worthy winner this year. So all the way from Italy, please put your hands together and welcome Manuel Playekna. Good evening. First of all, I want to congratulate all awarded photographers this night. It's a great honor for me to be here, and I want to thank the organizers and the judges that made this possible. I never thought seriously to stand here one day as a winner, knowing how difficult it is. A dream became true. I hope also my picture can contribute to a better preservation, especially of amphibians. Thank you. Moving on, our next behavioral uh, category this year is mammals. And we've come to the most action-packed category, whether it's slow motion, or explosive images. Capturing these moments invariably requires detailed planning, phenomenal camera skills, but also a little bit of serendipity might be a vital element there as well. <laughs> now, when you said, ah, oh, was that for the fox or the marmot? <laughs> Given the subjects are fellow mammals, the emotional reaction to these images, which you've just displayed fully and adequately, can inspire. They can be strong, but then quite often these pictures can hold your attention beyond the surprise of an extraordinary scene. And this year, the judges did something quite exceptional because they felt that there were two images deserving of the category's top prize. So we have two joint winners. We're going to ask each one to come to the stage separately. So first up is this photograph. <laughs> which certainly connected emotionally to the audience. It's called The Moment, The Moment. It was early spring on the grasslands of the King High Tibetan plateau, and the snow had just begun to melt. The Tibetan fox, with three hungry cubs to feed, had been lurking near the Himalayan marmot colony since first light, waiting for them to emerge from their burrows, as they do. Now, this young marmot had popped out nearest to the fox, spotted it, shouted alarm calls to its companions, and then darted back underground. But the fox didn't move. It lay in the same position, pretending to be asleep. Cunning, you see, the fox. <laughs> After an hour or so, the marmot decided to emerge for a second time, and this was the fox's chance. It sprinted forwards, and on this occasion, by a jaw's breadth, just missed grabbing the marmot as it turned. And for a moment, both animals seem frozen in a matter of life or death. But what you all want to know, I'm sure, is what happened next. <laughs> well, I'm afraid it was the inexperienced marmot that misjudged its move that day and the Tibetan fox cubs that enjoyed a fresh meal. Stop it. It's what makes the world go round. 
But look, these expressive postures hold you absolutely transfixed. And the energy between their raised paws seems to hold the pair in some sort of balance. Indeed, as these species are in nature, hence the balance of predator and prey. The face of the marmot, you might think it's funny at first glance, but then you realize that the feelings go far deeper and the reality of this is that it's a fight for survival. Ladies and gentlemen, what a stonking photograph. Please welcome, all the way from China, Yongqing Bao. Thank you. I am grateful to, the, to WPY for this award. I'm from Qinghai, China. My photography was taken in China's Qilian Mountain National Park, and I'm honored to share it with you. I was very fortunate to photograph these wildlife animals and their natural living conditions. If my work encourages more people to love and protect wild animals, that will be my greatest fulfillment. Thank you. Okay, so in unprecedented terms, we've got two joint winners. Our second this year is this photograph. <laughs> the equal match, the equal match. Fur flies here as the puma launches her attack on this guanaco. Now the photographer had spent seven months tracking these wild pumas on foot, enduring extreme cold, biting winds in the Torres del Paine region of Patagonia in Chile. And he'd learn a lot about their hunting techniques. So, having spotted the big male guanaco grazing, apart from its herd, on a small hill, therefore being a prime puma target, he pushed, positioned himself downwind and waited for a potential predation event. And sure enough, the puma arrived it took half an hour to creep up on the guanaco. And when it was within 10 meters, she sprinted and jumped. As her claws made contact, the guanaco twisted to the side, its last grassy mouthful flying there in the wind. The puma leapt on its back and tried to deliver a crushing bite to its neck. But, and this will please you, after the last story. <laughs> when the guanaco dropped its weight onto the puma, the predator had to let go. The guanaco got away. Four, oh, hold on. <laughs> what about the puma cubs starving in their den? <laughs> it's not unusual because four out of five puma hunts end like this unsuccessfully. And for that reason, it's rarely seen behavior. And look at it, the power, the beauty, held together by the energy of the movement of these two animals. The sheer perfection, the framing, the behavior, the exposure, everything is absolutely spot on. Once again, it's a great photograph. So please welcome to the stage, Germany's Ingo Arndt.
exciting. Um, good evening, everybody. It's a great honor to be here, and it's a great honor to receive this award tonight. I'm extremely happy that this picture received the award because, to me, it's the most important picture for my story on Pumas. Yeah, and it, it was difficult to photograph that story, and um, it was only possible with the support of the Puma Sportswear Company and with the support of National Geographic magazine. So thank you very much to both of them, and thank you very much to Kathy Moraine, my editor at National Geographic. Thanks, everybody, and um, have a nice evening. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Okay, our penultimate category before dinner is for those who have the vision to capture the essence of plants and fungi. Now, when you think about it, plants and fungi are the fundamental creators and controllers of the world we know. They are at the bottom of many of our ecosystems, and the variety of their form appears almost infinite, like great diversity of species. So, on that account, this category has scope for originality, and it requires thought and imagination to convey the importance and complexity of the interactions between these marvellous species and all the shapes that they display. And this year's awards most certainly display some of that tremendous variety. Once again, they're a very beautiful collection of photographs. But amongst them, the judges had to pick a winner, and this year they've chosen this photograph. Good title, this one as well, A Tapestry of Life. Tapestry of Life. And this is the art that nature creates in a truly spectacular fashion. What is it? Well, festooned with bulging orange velvet, trimmed with grey lace, the arms of this Monterey cypress tree weave an otherworldly canopy over Pinnacle Point in Point Lobos State National Reserve in California. Now, the spongy orange cladding is, in fact, a mass of algae, and it's colored by a carotenoid pigment, so not the general green chlorophyll that algaes have, but the carrot green carotenoid one here. And they depend on that, obviously, for their ability to photosynthesize, and they also depend upon the tree to support them, to get them up there where the light is so they can go about their business. This tiny protected coastal zone. It's the only place in the world where the natural conditions of clean air, moisture, combine to produce this magical scene. This is one of those insights that we spoke of. What are the chances of us ever having time to visit this place and going there on a day when it looks like this? The photographers transported us to somewhere absolutely magical. And after several days experimenting, they decided on a close-up abstract of this one particular tree. And this is a focus stack of 22 images superimposed to reveal this colorful maze in enormous depth. It's a great creation. It's a wondrous and beautiful interweaving of the natural world, a symbolic expression of the branching connections of all life itself. Please welcome, from Serbia, Sarika Kovacevic. Thank you for welcoming me here tonight. Overjoyed by this honor, 
I would like to convey special thank you to the National History Museum, London, the Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition, and the jury. For this image, I didn't have to travel far and wide across seas. Point Lobos is quite close to my home. It's a special ecoregion. Nowhere else in the world, these three species coexist naturally together. The gift of nature and beauty is shared with all who visit, not only Point Lobos, but the whole central California coast, which is a natural treasure trove. Thank you again for this memorable event. Okay, last category before dinner, and we're going to explore the world of black and white. These photographs are a work of art in which the vision and skills of the photographer are clearly expressed and used to show the subject in a graphical, fundamental, elementary way. Once realized, good black and white pictures can reveal the essence of the subject like nothing else. They are, after all, a distillation. Some of the complexity, color, has been removed. There's a greater clarity in the form, the composition, the other photographic elements that remain. And the jury believe that this year's winning images are all perfect examples of photographers mastering this art. And this year, in our black and white category, category this photograph is the winner. Super photograph, really super photograph. In a winter whiteout in Yellowstone National Park, a lone American bison stands weathering the silent snowstorm. Shooting from the vehicle, the photographer could only just make out the figure on the hillside. Now, bison survive in Yellowstone's harsh winter by feeding on grasses and sedges beneath the snow. The reason that they have such a low slung head is that they use that snow and their shaggy beards um, to push all of the snow out of the way so that they can get to those grasses. That's why they have that massive hump on their back. That's their neck muscles that they use for swinging that head to access those plants in the wintertime. Um, you can see that they do that, and then they sweep that snow away to forage below what is left there. Slowing down the shutter speed here to blur the snow and paint a curtain of lines across the bison's silhouette our photographer has created a very painterly image that combines the stillness of the animal with the movement of the actual snowfall itself. It's been slightly overexposed to enhance the whiteout and convert the photograph to black and white accentuated the simplicity of this scene. When you look at this, you can feel the silence of that snowscape, the enormous power of the bison and those brush strokes of the falling snow. It's very simple, it's very graphic, and it's extraordinarily beautiful. So please welcome our winner to the stage from the USA, Max Wall. Thank you very much to the jury uh, for this selection. It's an amazing honor. Um, the last time I was up on stage for a similar event, I thank my wife for all of her support over the years and for being with me. Unfortunately, our 15-month-old son was also with us, and she was busy chasing him through a hallway back in the confines of that venue. So uh, we left him at home this time, and she is still here with me. So Jen, thank you very much. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're halfway through the awards, undeniably amazing start to our evening. 
Um, do enjoy your dinner and all of the discussions that will revolve around those tables about the judge's decision so far, I've no doubt. Um, I'm going to walk around the tables now just to make sure that you have all eaten your starters. And if you haven't, I'm going to report you to the matron. <laughs> Other than that, I'll see you in 45 minutes' time for the rest of our awards and, of course, the announcement of who our overall winners are this evening. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Well, we are halfway through the awards and our photographers are now sitting down for dinner, but this gives us a chance to take a closer look at some of the winning categories so far. And I am really pleased to be joined in the studio tonight by award-winning photographer, Matt Moran. Matt, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. It's a real pleasure and a treat to be here. Thanks and for having me. You're going to be our pundit for the evening, so you're going to, you're going to help me analyse some of these images because I think I would be lost without you. That's right. I think I've, I've I've sort of been working on my superlatives. I've got a big bag of them <laughs> behind me. <laughs> You're going to need them. You really are. <laughs> now, Matt, you've got some experience with this competition. Uh, in fact, last year you had uh, an image in our Lumix People's Choice Award, a very popular image. That's right. Yeah, it was. Um, well, I've been trying to get something in this competition for about 16 years, I think, and I did a lot of travelling, and you know, thought that was the answer. Southeast Asia, uh, North America, Africa, and uh, yeah, the winning shot was um, of this fox just <laughs> 10 minutes from where I live. So it was a, a really nice treat to, to get something in the competition and, and take part in, in the awards, which, you know, it really is the, the holy grail of, of wildlife photography. So it, it means an, an awful lot to, to actually get yeah. a, a, an image into the competition, doesn't it? Absolutely. The, the, the platform is, is, is huge. You know, so few of us wildlife photographers make it here, you know, just a hundred out of you know, thousands and thousands of pictures. Um, so you really do have to take, you know, something special. Um, and then of course the exposure you get from you know, having an image in this competition mm. is magnificent, not just being here at the exhibition, uh, which of course is wonderful and reaches a lot of people, but it tours worldwide, you know, the press opportunities are, are, are magnificent. And now of course social media with such big following, it's, it's really great to, to, to be part of that and be part of that community at kind of the top table of wildlife photography. <laughs> and what I really love about uh, your image is that you, you, it, it tells us that you don't need to go to an exotic place to get a really, really great photograph as well. This was in your neighborhood. That's right. And I, I think that's, that's changing you know, quite a lot in, in nature photography. Mm. Um, even a lot of the, the big names out there that, that I talk to who have traveled a lot are, are doing work much closer to home and telling stories about you know, what's on their doorstep. It's mm -hmm. also about access. It's also about, um, you know, making life that little bit easier for yourself. I mean, it is great fun and, you know, it's wonderful to go to exotic locations and places that are not familiar to your own. But, um, you know, it's actually also quite hard work, you know, particularly with getting this shot. You know, it took me around about six months. I had this... Six months? Yeah, I had this wow. idea um, once I'd seen the, the wonderful stencil by this artist called Stewie, who'd done it, I think it was about 10 years before um, I got this shot. And um, so it was, you know, it was certainly an effort going back over and over again um, and just getting that position um, just right. And it also made me realise what a good job he'd done of capturing the spirit of, of the fox. So That's to get that, you know, I was, I was sort of quietly confident it, it might, you know, get in there. There's a lot, you know, lots of people taking really great pictures of urban foxes but this is something a little bit different which is what the competition are always looking for. Definitely. Um, so we've had 10 categories awarded so far. The, the uh, overall winners are still to be announced, so keep watching. And remember, we are live, so if you do have any questions for Matt at all, um, do post them in the comment section and we'll, and we'll try to get through some of your questions as well. But let's take a look at some of our winning images. If we start, first of all, with our um, young photographer categories, I always look forward to seeing these <laughs> and they always absolutely amaze me this year fantastic mm. technically amazing images if we take a look first of all our, our under 10 winner thomas easterbrook with his image humming surprise what is it that really works about this image well yeah i i kind of agree with you about looking forward to seeing the young categories it also as an older photographer <laughs> does make you a little bit sick as well <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> we've got to compete against this as well but you know the standards just get better and better every year um and, you know, I think 
know, Chris mentioned it in, 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 the, in the presentation of the award, it's the technical ability of this is amazing to me, but this tiny subject and a very thin focal plane, so it's flying in and out of that and managed to get the face sharp, there's a catch light in the eye, it shows really great behaviour, shows the proboscis feeding in the flower and that wing blur and that kind of relationship between the flower um, and the moth is quite extraordinary. So the composition is really beautiful. Mm. It is, it is, and, and a, a challenging, a really challenging image to take, I would imagine. Un unbelievably, and w also what I like about this, this kind of image is, you know, one of the most important things when you're taking a picture is looking at what's behind that picture. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got this really lovely soft uh, green background and it really helps that subject to stand out. And often we can forget that, you know, when we're looking through the lens, we're really focusing on the subject but we've got to look behind as well. Well, we'll pause for just a second. We'll, we'll move on to our uh, other young winners, but I believe we have a photographer, one of our winners uh, out on the floor, Khalil, our, our second host, as, as Max War to interview. Well, massive congratulations on your win. How does it feel to have uh, won the Black and White category? I'm a little bit relieved, actually, because uh, this has been held in secret for a little while, so a little bit of relief, but truly, truly honored. Uh, this wasn't my first year entering the competition, but uh, I know how meaningful it is, and uh, so yeah, it was very special. So what's it like to shoot in such a challenging environment, like in that snow? Fortunately, I had some experience doing it before, and in this case, I was lucky because I was in my vehicle, so it was nice and toasty inside. So I was just able to roll down the window. There wasn't a lot of time. We couldn't get out or anything like that, so just had to roll down the window, point the lens, and fire away. And at that point, you just go on past experience, really, and uh, try and put something together that works, especially in such a thick snowstorm like that. And it's produced a wonderful effect. It's a beautiful image. Thank you so much. I'll let you get back to your dinner. Thank you, and congratulations again. All right, thank you very much. Great to hear from Mac, Max there, and uh, let's take a look at his image, because it's a real stunner, isn't it? It really um, is. How do you achieve a shot like this? <laughs> 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 well, I mean, what was interesting hearing him talk there um, was that, you know, he made it sound like it was quite easy, he was in his warm car, he, did, he, 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 went down, he yeah. wound down his window, <laughs> but the key thing is that he's gone back, you know, so he's visited that location, revisited it over and over again, um, and, you know, that is, the key to it you know there's a lot of people talk about patience mm. in nature photography but I think persistence is, 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 is an even bigger attribute and that just revisiting lo those locations you know he knew the subject he knew the scene Chris had mentioned about the overexposure which is really nice creating this very simple effect and it just this kind of image really lends itself well to, to black and white mm. completely it would be quite different if it, it was in color I think yeah I think so often um, images of, of snow in color have quite a blue, bluish hue to them. Um, but the graphic nature of black and white really works. Mm. And, and I love this slow shutter speed. It creates that little bit of drama. You know, you can see how powerful that snow is. And also when I look at images like this, I really appreciate, you know, how hard animals work, you know, and Absolutely. the conditions, never mind the photographers. I mean, he was warm and toasty exactly, in his car. Exactly, toasty in his car. Yeah, yeah. but this, <laughs> this, poor, this bison animal. just, you know, <laughs> weathering that storm, it, it, the, the image really captures that. Yeah, and it's got that gorgeous sort of, uh, that graphic, that sort of painterly um, kind of a tone to it. In fact, the judge is called this simple graphic and abstract. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really wonderful. And, and to hear about that behaviour, how they have got these big, strong heads and, you know, pushing that snow away to, to get to their food in, in those conditions is quite something. Uh, what's the worst conditions you'd have to photograph <laughs> in? <laughs> Anything um, like this? Uh, n no, I mean, I've... I've I've gone up to my neck in, in, in ponds, in kind of boggy ponds. Um, I've never really done any you know, extreme cold like this. I've got bad circulation, <laughs> so my fingers and toes, I just don't think they would, they would really handle it. But yeah, getting wet, getting muddy, mm. um, I don't, I'm not sure if I could handle these kind of minus 40, <laughs> minus 50 conditions. <laughs> So let's get back to our young winners um, with another absolutely stunning image, uh, Cruz Erdman and Night Glow. So this is the winner of the 11 to uh, 14 year category. Incredible in terms of the, uh, the framing, but also just the speed and having the presence of mind to actually capture that image. It, it's a, it was a chance encounter. Yeah, that's right. And I think when you're you know, dealing with 
animals like this that you know we really don't see and you know we're much more connected to land animals mm. to capture something like this is um is quite special and showing the color and again you know composition wise it's very simple which you know means it's much easier for us to read much easier for us to connect with mm. um and you're just drawn in by the the wonderful color that's that's presented in this and the black backdrop really helps that subject to stand out again it is it's it's stunning in fact the the judges called this technically and aesthetically perfect would you agree wow yeah that's a that's a, a big claim it but is yeah. it is <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be and again it's that you know that thing about the the competition um you know you really have to i guess kind of be you know sure when you're entering that these images are technically really really good um you know otherwise they are gonna fall by the wayside mm. and um, not only is it so challenging shooting underwater, you know, so so far down, Absolutely. no light, you know, using using flash, um, uh, you know, also dealing with diving. Um, you have to be a really 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 good diver, of course. Yeah, it's but you're not even thinking about your photography. Uh, sorry, not even thinking about your diving. You're just you know thinking about the photography. So. Uh, a really, you know, amazing accomplishment. Remarkable, remarkable image. Now, I believe we have another one of our photographers out on the floor. This is Manuel. So let's go over to Khalil. Mic check, mic check. Manuel, massive congratulations on winning the amphibians and reptiles category. How does it feel? Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, it's the most important uh, competition on the world. And so for me, it's a special moment of my life and uh, I'm enjoying. <laughs> How long did you have to spend in that pond to get that image of those frogs and the spawn? I, uh, I dedicated uh, almost 10 years uh, to the frogs. And uh, so I uh, focused the photography first on land and then uh, I wanted to make pictures also underwater. And so after several years, I find the perfect lake where I, ca I, could, uh, I could realize my, the pictures I had in my mind. Well, the, the lake is wonderful. The water is beautiful and clear and you produce an absolutely magical image. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I'll let you get back to your dinner. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have uh, Manuel's image here. It is a stunner, isn't it? It's 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 beautiful. The colours are amazing. Very serene. W what is it about this image do you do you like the most? Um, I think when you're looking at a picture like this, you're just completely drawn in. There's also you know a lot of questions thrown up. What's going on? The sense of space. You know, there's incredible mm. depth to this picture. The use of the wide-angle lens. All the colour, all the mind-blowing colour that's in it. Um, and you know, your eye just will darts around all of these species, like from front all the way to the back, um, and you're really drawn in. Mm. You know, of course, photography being two-dimensional, it's one of the biggest challenges is how can you draw the viewer into the picture, and I think this one has achieved it, it immensely really well. Uh, the the colour is incredible. It's, it's very calm and serene. It really is another world, isn't it? Yeah, completely. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's done such a good job, and then to hear there, you know, he dedicated, you know, 10 years of his life to this one species. Mm. You know, these are not chance encounters. This is really studying and knowing your subject too. Absolutely, and uh, immersing himself in a, in a cold pond. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah, the great lengths that, that, that the photographers are going to. And, you know, again, it's funny seeing the shots of them in tuxedos and, you know, having a nice meal in this beautiful location here at the museum. Um, you know, most of them are in really challenging conditions, you know, getting shots like this. Now, um, I believe Khalil is uh, speaking to another photographer on the floor. This time we have Ingo from our Behaviour Mammals category. So let's hear from him. Congratulations, Ingo, on uh, the joint winning of the, an uh, the mammals category. And this is an absolutely wonderful image. And how does it feel to have, uh, to have won the category? Oh, it's always a, a great honor to be here in the Natural History Museum, Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Uh, to me, it's uh, the most important competition we have as wildlife photographers. And to receive an award here is, um, you cannot beat it. So how long did you spend uh, with these pumas to get this shot? Um, I was in Patagonia for seven months, during, so I was working for two and a half years for that story and I was in Patagonia for, for seven months altogether. And you must have formed quite a, 
quite a relationship with these animals whilst whilst taking pictures. Of them. Oh yes, of course. So I, I mostly followed the same animals, and after a few months, they got used to my presence, and a few of them um, always came pretty close. Especially one um, came one day 15 meters close to me, was sleeping in front of me, and this is the most beautiful thing you, you can experience as a wildlife photog photographer if a big, shy cat is sleeping in front of you. That's a beautiful moment. And do you miss them? I miss them very much, but I will travel to Patagonia soon, and around Christmas I should uh, be able to say hello to them. Well, I hope that's a wonderful reunion. It's a beautiful photo, and congratulations again on joint winning in the mammals category. Thank you. I'll let you get back to your dinner. Thank you. Now, Matt, our um, behaviour mammals category was a really fascinating one this year. Lots of incredible images, uh, many that pack a real emotional punch. And, of course, we have joint winners, which, yeah, was, which, that which has, was a surprise. I don't think that's happened before, right? No, no, I, didn't, I think I can't remember the last time Not that happened. Not in this category, if at all. Anyway. Not in this category. Um, so we have Ingo's him image here. Uh, so let's take a look at this one first of all. What makes this a winner, do you think? <laughs> Wow, it's the moment, isn't it? Um, and to hear again him, him talk about the time and effort, you know, anybody watching this who's interested in getting into wildlife photography, I mean, that's the lesson, is really mm -hmm. spending a lot of time um, and doing it sensitively as well. I loved hearing him talk about how, you know, this cat ended up sleeping quite close to him. This is a wild animal. So he'd really put in a lot of effort to, to get close and, and was rewarded with this. And it's just the, the body position there um, of, of the prey, um, you know, the two paws around the neck, it's just, you know, and right bang in the middle of the frame. Who says you can't put the subject in the middle of the frame, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> there's so much drama there. You've got some, you know, dust flying up. Um, you see the power of the cat, mm. you know, the muscles around the shoulders. It's beautifully lit, you know, quite flat lighting, but, you know, you're really forced to look at the action going on right in the centre there. So it's extraordinary mm. shot and I, when I first looked at it I didn't notice the the food coming out of the <laughs> the Guanaco's wow, mouth no, there. Neither did that, I. that yeah. incredible action shot it is absolutely stunning now um, many mammals it's a it can be a tricky category because they're quite a mammals generally are quite often photographed do you think it gets uh, difficult every year to, to show something that's sort of new and different yeah I think so and I think that's you know whenever I go and visit the exhibition here at the museum which I do every year it's you know, it's jaw-dropping, really, because, you know, the standard, I think, just gets better and better. I mean, you only have to go back 20 years, and, of course, it was m more difficult in the mm. film days. Um, but, you know, with newer techniques, you know, the, the technology also of the cameras improving, um, a lot of people using camera traps over the last few years. So the boundaries are always being pushed, um, and, you know, particularly when, you know, capturing behaviour like this. But what's nice about this... Uh, uh, that I like is that he'd really put in a lot of field craft as well. So he was behind mm -hmm. you know, the camera when this was taken and, and, and just executed it brilliantly. Um, and of course we have the, the other uh, winner in this category, uh, The Moment by uh, Yong Ching Bao, uh, which is another incredible image. Yeah. Um, this one, the judges loved the energy. Obviously, the, the facial expressions are absolutely brilliant, but there's a huge amount going on in this image, isn't there? There really is, yeah. There's great tension, you know, there's life and death here. I love the, the kind of balance between the two paws of the fox and of the marmot. Um, again, you've got that lovely soft lighting, really nice clean background, and the action to have those two animals so close to each other and this perfect space between them, uh, it's 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 really is the perfect moment it's real drama um as well and it does leave you you know wanting to know my goodness what happened next absolutely and this this uh, particular image doesn't have a very happy ending for the the marmot no does it? i know but then you know that is nature being red in tooth and claw and um, you know yes. the, the fox has <laughs> its pups to feed right <laughs> it does it does <laughs> um, but let's jump back uh, to our a final young category uh, winner yes. we we missed out uh, Paul Ricardo uh, with his beautiful image early riser now the color and the light here yeah. absolutely incredible isn't it I really I really love this and I think one of the things and this is what I love about hearing people talk about their pictures and Chris had mentioned there about the use of a little bit of fill flash, um, which has, has completely has made this picture. 
and it's lit beautifully because you know you wouldn't assume that this is shot with flash it's not blitzed it's controlled really well it's on a very low power but just enough to illuminate both eyes here you've got catch lights in the eyes and it's just grabs the spirit of that animal beautifully it shows it beautifully it's in, in its environment and again it's that lovely soft clean background you know the animal just really stands out and fills the frame wonderfully Absolutely. Our judges uh, commented that, that it was a wonderful uh, balance between the, the subject and its environment, which, which I think is absolutely yeah, true. completely. And the lovely tones as well. You know, you can almost reach out and touch you know, the soft fur of the gelada there. It's, it's really beautiful. And it's got that little sideways glance of the mother <laughs> and then eye contact with the, with the infant yeah. as well, which is, is absolutely beautiful. I know, there's some nice comedy in it as well, yeah. you know, and just you know, seeing that close bond between the, m the mother and its infant and... You know, you can look at this image for a long time. Absolutely. How impressed were you uh, with the, the young entrance this year? Yeah, it's, um, it, 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 like I said before, it's, it's always really impressive. Um, you know, the standard, you, I think the, the images that you do see in the young categories, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to see them in the adult categories. Mm. You know, they're that good. They really are. It's incredible. It always surprises me every year that the, the quality <laughs> of, the, of the, the young images particularly. It's absolutely wonderful. So let's move on to our behaviour birds category. We have a beautiful image from Alden Rickardson and an image that was three years in the making, yeah, which that is incredible. incredible. Yeah. That is dedication. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, yeah. You think, what, you know, what else was he doing for these three years? <laughs> I'm sure lots of other stuff, but I mean, just the, this is one of those that's you know, really planned, really well thought out. Um, and, you know, I bet he couldn't believe his luck when, when he looked at this on the back of his camera. It's just got everything, hasn't it? It's got, you know, energy, use of, use of wide angle, the power, you know, the, that hazy sun in the background, the balance between the bird coming in and, and the distant sun in the background is just, you know, extraordinary. Beautifully sharp, incredible drama. Uh, you know, I'm using up my superlative <laughs> bags just on this one picture, but you can really see why the judges chose this. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, now we're going to jump over quickly to the uh, award ceremony floor because I believe we have a uh, young winner, Thomas Easterbrook. Nice. I don't think they're quite ready. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Thomas, they're looking quite confused. <laughs> Bless him. We'll hopefully uh, get Thomas a little bit later on. Uh, but let's go back to uh, Alden's uh, incredible image. His eye for composition is remarkable. Is that something that you develop over time? I think so, yeah. Um, it's a lot about also making mistakes. you know. And I think when you set out with a, a plan like he did for, for this image, of course, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. You can't control mm -hmm. um, what the wildlife, you know, what the animals are going to do. Um, and so, I think if you, I think it's good to go out with a plan um, and have a focus. You know, have these images in your head, um, but also kind of rely a little bit and be a bit flexible to, you know, be open to to get, you know, some surprises and some spontaneity. Um, but certainly setting out with an idea of, of, of what you want to get, you know, really helps for mm. sure. Now, I believe we we've, we've, uh, can go back to Thomas. I think they're ready for him. Well, Thomas, massive congratulations on winning the 10 and under category with your image of that hawk moth. How does it feel to have won? Uh, it's slightly overwhelming, to be honest. I've never won anything like it before. Um, it, uh, I'm very grateful to the judges. It's been a, an amazing experience. Well, you've really earned it, and hopefully be, this will be the first of many. With that moth moving from flower to flower all the time, how hard was it to get a decent shot? I mean, it was very jumpy. Uh, I took lots and lots of photos and only managed to get one or two good ones. It just kept jumping from flower to flower. Well, I guess that's the benefit of perseverance. Yeah. So, what's your favourite animal that you've ever taken a picture of? Uh, that's a very hard question. I don't really have a favourite animal that I've taken a picture of. I just love all of the animals. 
Excellent answer. Well, thank you so much, and massive congratulations once again for your victory, and good luck in the draw for the uh, Young Photographer of the Award. I'll let you get back to your dinner, but thanks a lot again. Cheers. Great to hear from Thomas there. Yeah. I mean, winning in a, a, an award like this at such a young age, that, that could have potentially have a huge impact. Yeah, what a boost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the recognition you get, you know, this is, this is marvellous. I mean, of course, and for his confidence as well, mm. just to kind of move forward, um, you know, continue with doing like really, really great work like he's done is, you know, he's got a, a bright future ahead for sure. Absolutely. Um, now let's take a look at another winning image, our behaviour invertebrates category yeah, with uh, Daniel Cronauer and his architectural army. Now this shot is quite remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> Very <laughs> the unusual. The detail. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's great actually looking at it really close on, on this mm, screen here. Yeah, and seeing you it see this close it, up yeah. and in so much detail is, is fantastic. So we have um, a, a nest of nomadic um, army ants here, which I believe Daniel had been tracking for quite some time. Uh, a case of really knowing your, your subject very well. Yeah, and, and you know, executing a shot like this, which you know, it, it could look straightforward if you came across this in a, in a, in a rainforest. But you know, it's lit beautifully. Um, it's always really challenging under the canopy. Um, you know, not just the humidity that's going to be uh, have an effect on your mm. on your camera. Um, you know, particularly on the lens, but also the light bursting through the canopy, the real nightmare for exposure. But looking at this up close, you see all the detail, and it kind of looks like a crown of, mm. of ants. And when you get up close, you see, wow, it's it's quite amazing um, thinking about how many there are and the formation that they have. And um, this is one, again, you can spend a lot of time looking at all the little individual ants and how they work as a team. Is uh, That picture really tells a good story. It's really, really incredible. Um, the judges commented that this is an image that gives you the creeps, <laughs> which I'm not sure I would agree with. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, you certainly wouldn't want them, you know, kind of running all, running all over you. And, um, you know, I mean, they look pretty threatening, don't they? Yeah, I'm not sure if they bite or not but um <laughs> well again that's the if, if if they don't they've they've done a good job mm. in evolution to look the way they do i mean Absolutely. i certainly wouldn't want to put my hand in there that's yeah, for sure definitely not um now i believe we have another photographer uh, f uh, on the award ceremony floor this is uh ripan uh, so let's uh hear from him Rapun, massive congratulations on winning the animal portraits category how do you feel for about how do you feel about your victory Oh, it's it's the moment of my life. Actually, I'm 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 doing photography for more than ten years, but uh, I haven't thought that I can come here. <laughs> and today, I'm here. It's very pleasing. Well, you've definitely earned it. And both this and the other image you've entered in the invertebrate behavior category are both of very small animals. Is there something that you particularly like about photographing small animals? Yes, I have a tendency to uh, liking very small animals. I am basically do macro photography of this small uh, invertebrates mainly. Uh, sometimes I do frogs and snakes. But uh, I love them very much. They are my favorites. And I guess they're often overlooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the point, now nah. because uh, they, 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 they are the basics of they are the basics of our ecosystem. They do much more um, than uh, big mammals or, or, or to the to the nature, right? But uh, we don't know very much about them. This is the problem with us. But uh, we want uh, we should know them very much. Well, I'm glad someone's sticking up for the invertebrates and the small animals. Anyway, thank you so much, and congratulations once again on your, on your victory. I'll let you get back to your dinner. Thanks, Rupan. Thanks, thanks. Thank you very much. And here we have uh, the, uh, the winning image, uh, Faces of Deception. This is fantastic. It's so nice to see an invertebrate winning the portraits category, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and surprisingly few yeah. images in the portraits yeah. yes, category, yeah. which is usually, you know, the most oversubscribed. And like you say, it's, you know, almost always mammals um, but this is wonderful isn't it and it's kind of hard not to anthropomorphize and <laughs> yeah. see the character yes. um, if, of, of this picture and you know there's so much you can say about this that again with that macro lens lovely shallow depth of field beautifully lit um, catch lights in the eye that's really given that that species a, 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 a lovely character 
What stands out for you most, do you think, in this image? Um, I love that it fills the frame. I think that's mm -hmm. something that, yeah, as a photographer, you can forget. And we're always, you know, we've got all these limitations, mm -hmm. two dimensions. You know, we've just got this rec small rectangle frame. And I think sometimes we can forget to fill it. And he's executed that really, really well. And uh, it was lovely to, to hear him speak. And you can see what it means for all the photographers, you know, getting something in, in this competition. Absolutely. Um, and that enthusiasm enthusiasm for the subject as well yeah which yeah is which great. is often overlooked like you yeah. said absolutely and it's incredible this this in insect it, you don't realize it's, it's five millimeters long so incredible incredible image the judges uh, commented that they it was the tight framing and the the posture the legs up um posture on the uh, the, the spider here that, that yeah and that i think that really draws you through the picture again that you've got the spacing is just perfect from front to back and you know even these out of focus legs in the background you're drawn through to that um, in the picture so That's yeah congratulations to him now we have a, another photographer on the exhibition floor i think we have uh, alden this time so who is a behavior birds winner so alden congratulations on winning the behavior birds category how does it feel to one well, it's, uh, how should I say it, it's, uh, it's always a great pleasure. This is the biggest achievement you can get in nature photography. It's, uh, it's known as the Oscar and it, it is the Oscar. So, yeah, it's it's really, really good feeling. And uh, hearing about the story behind your image, it must have taken quite some time to kind of get into the head of the, of the eagle and, and get it to land on that perch that you'd created. Yeah. Well, it, 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 took, uh, it took me three years, in fact. Uh, and I, during that process, I was almost giving up quite a few times. Uh, but I, because this is very close to my home, it's just like 20 minutes hike from my home, it's gonna be easy to try to continue this and, and be there at the right time, at the right to, to adjust things. So, so that's why and I saw there were some promising uh, things happening and, and that's why I continued. Were there any other birds that used that perch other than the eagle that you took a photo yeah, of? Yeah, yeah, it was. In fact, the, the thing just after this picture was taken, um, I, the, the eagle left because they are nesting in the area and when they started to nest they leave my, my uh, territory. Uh, and I decided to leave the camera there, and just by luck, a black rose turned up to starting to use the tree and find found that tree as a really nice area to charm uh, the ladies. And, and I got some a few thousand pictures and some really really good one on the black rose as well. So I was really pleased with that. Oh, I can't wait to see those. And congratulations again on your win. And I'll let you get back to your dinner. Thank you so much, Aldrin. Congratulations. Fantastic to hear from Alden. They're very naturally dressed. Yeah, as amazing. Always. What a great look. <laughs> and it's another case of, you know, a photographer doing something close to home. Absolutely. Again, <laughs> don't need to travel around the world. That's although right. Although it's nice too. Although he did look like a pretty beautiful location where he lived, didn't <laughs> Absolutely, it? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now there is uh, one more image, uh, one more mini image that we haven't covered yet, and it's our plants and fungi category. It's tapestry of life. This is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I think we're st we're still waiting for an overall winner of the competition in plants. Maybe one day we'll we'll get one. One day, yeah. yeah. Is this category, do you think, quite a, a tricky one to to sort of stand out in? I think so. Yeah, I'm always really impressed. You know, you're always. Um, educated as well by well all the categories but you know particularly subjects that you don't you know see so regularly you know mammals birds um, so looking at the plants category in the exhibition I always love it you know learning about fungi learning about all the different species species that are growing on species and you know this image shows that really beautifully it's it's something else it is absolutely stunning. The, the colour is incredible. Uh, apparently, Zurich has spent uh, quite some time experimenting to get the, the composition right of this one. So that, that kind of framing, that knowing what to include and exclude, how important is that? Yeah, it's, it, it, it's very important. Um, and again, great to hear this kind of trial and error process, which is so important in nature mm. photography, making mistakes, um, learning from your mistakes. and. Often images when you're in the field and you're taking them can look very different when you're back at home in your studio office or whatever and you're uploading them. And 
And I think that kind of journey and that process is really important because you know when you're in the field, it's it's a 3D experience. You mm -hmm. have the sounds, you have the smells um, as well. And then when you're in front of a, a flat screen, it can be quite cold. So going through that process of trial and error is is really important. And I was taken by this because you know this is it can be seen as perhaps a bit messy. You know, there's lots going on mm -hmm. in here. But again, when you start looking close, there are focus points. Your eye is kind of drawn through the picture. You've got these three lovely different tones, the reds of the lichens and the, you know, the, the brown woody colored of the, of the branch uh, branches running through. So your eye kind of dances through this picture. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's lovely to look at. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, now, I believe we have another photographer uh, on the floor. I believe it is Ricardo this time. Congratulations, Ricardo, on winning the 15 to 17 category. Uh, how does it feel to have won this category? Uh, thank you. Uh, it felt amazing, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, and uh, I wanted to, to thank you, everybody, the staff, the jury, and the organization. How did it feel to see all of those galadas climbing over that cliff at dawn? It's, ama it's amazing. Uh, in the morning, when they come up, there are so many. Uh, they can be hundreds, uh, and they come uh, all over you. They, they walk around, uh, they walk past, they are very confident. Well, you've really captured an amazing image. Thank you so much, and congratulations again. I'll let you get back to your dinner. Thank you so much. Fun. Fantastic to hear from another one of our, our young winners. That's right, keeping the, the older photographers on their toes. Definitely <laughs> keeping them on their toes. <laughs> Not a <of> competition. <laughs> now, um, Zarika's beautiful image. Um, I believe uh, this is, uh, it, it, well, it, it's, 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 it's one of our more artistic images, I think, that we've, we've looked at so far. Yeah, and you can often get that in, in the plants and, and fungi category. You know, there's lots of room for being very, exactly. very creative. I mean, the subjects, you know, unlike behaviour, you know, they're not chasing each other around. So photographers do have a bit more time to think you know, about composition, to think about framing, to think about the detail. Um, you know, there's n I guess there's no less skill in it in terms of shooting you know, behaviour, you also do have to rely a, a lot on luck. Um, so given the time that you know, one has when you know, shooting plants and fungi, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a real challenge to get something that stands, stands out. Now I think we've, we can actually go to the floor to speak to Zarika now. Uh. Zarika, congratulations. You've won the plants and fungi category with this absolutely magical image. Um, how does it feel? Oh, fantastic. I'm overwhelmed. And um, I had the privilege of working with so many talented photographers, my superheroes in the world of photography. And to be standing on that stage where they all stood long before me is beyond my wildest dreams. I'm overwhelmed. That's wonderful. And I've, I've really enjoyed seeing uh, a plants and fungi winner with no green in it. Well, actually, Orange algae is uh, Trentofolia. It's actually green algae that gets, um, it produces uh, pigment keratin through photosynthesis. It gives it um, orangey, rustic color. It's actually green algae, but you don't see green color because of keratin. So you must be very lucky to, to live near to such unique natural beauty. Absolutely. Oh, yes. It's a unique space. They are, especially Monterey cypresses, have a very rare distribution. There are only two naturally grow on Earth. One is in Point Lobos. Another one is across the bay at Carmel. But Carmel, um, Monterey cypresses, don't have algae and lichen because uh, that's... Well, <laughs> it's not conducive to their growth, so that's why they occur only at Point Lobos, specifically at a pinnacle point in Point Lobos. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, I believe that announcement is us having to let you go and get back to your dinner. But congratulations once again, Zolika, and good luck in the final draw. Thank you. Thank you. 
massive congratulations to Zorica, a well-deserved winning image. Yeah. And a great education as well, you know, yeah. come to the exhibition and, and learn about all of these images and the stories behind them. And <coughs> great also to see a, a, a female yeah, category I was winner. Say, and our first female winner. Yes, <laughs> among a male-dominated <laughs> world, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it is refreshing for sure. Uh, Matt, is there a particular category that you look forward to seeing each year? Um, well, I'm biased because you know a lot of my work is close to home and and you know shooting urban wildlife, so I always keep a keen eye out for for that category. Um, and there's always incredible stuff that, that that comes up. So yeah, that's one of my favourites for sure. And of course, your uh, winning image from last year was uh, urban fox. That's right. Um, so you're a particular champion for foxes, aren't <laughs> you? <laughs> I am. Yeah, I think um, you know my mission behind my photography of foxes is to kind of you know, do a good PR job for the fox. They often get kind of slammed in tabloid press of, you know, being sort of, you know, bloodthirsty or, you know, they're kind of a nuisance, they're a pest. Um, but, you know, I view these animals as being as sensitive as all, really, and they are just trying to make a living like we all are in the city. You know, they're looking for food, they're looking for shelter, they're looking for water and somewhere to bring up their young. So, um, you know, that's a fox just doing what foxes do, and it just so happens that they've, you know, made a home in our cities. Now, Matt, we actually uh, spoke with you uh, last year about this image, so so let's play that that interview now. Right. I love photographing urban wildlife. I'm a, a Londoner, born and bred, so growing up in the city, it's it's your, your way of in, engaging with nature. I've done lots of travelling all over the world. But I think the urban wildlife story is a great one of showing about how animals can adapt to different settings, you know, all their different survival skills. I find that really fascinating. Foxes are special to me because living and growing up in a city like London, you know, you see them around and it's a reminder that they're our last large carnivore in the UK. We hunted everything out hundreds of years ago and, you know, they might not be on an endangered species list, but that doesn't mean that they're not important. That's what I'm hoping to do with my pictures, is tell this story and share them um, as an education tool for capturing animal behaviour and showing how wildlife can thrive in a city. Fantastic. Now, how important to you is it that photography uh, can help raise awareness, or uh, of, uh, particularly of conservation issues? Yeah, I think it's hugely important. You know, it's not the be-all and end-all, but we all need to communicate about stories and all organizations you know big ngos that champion wildlife conservation need images and they need videos so we are you know a uh, uh, quite a big part of that you know telling stories people react to images images resonate with people so if you can capture you know someone's imagination and someone who might be you know you could influence in policy change, for example, um, then, you know, we, we, we do have a big role to play, you know, with the scientists and writers and everyone else that's involved in, in you know, the, the kind of furthering of conservation, which of course is much needed. Mm. Um, and then a, a, a competition like this can really provide a platform, can't it? Completely, yeah. And that's one of the things that I've really loved about following this competition over the years is it's really championing, you know, photojournalism um, now, you know, with the Photojournalist Awards, um, I'm also really looking forward to seeing those, um, you know, and people telling stories and also people going out there and doing really brave work um, and, uh, yeah, telling stories about, really important stories about wildlife conservation um, and, you know, the exposure that this competition gives uh, and the reach that it has, millions of people worldwide, uh, the competition almost has a responsibility to tell these stories, so it's great that that's being championed. Absolutely. Um, with that in mind, uh, the second half of the competition is about to start, so let's go back to the award ceremony floor.
My lords, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage your host, Chris Packham. Okay, we're going to crack on through the second half now because we have determined that you have the opportunity to see, enjoy and scrutinise the photographs in the exhibition. So I'm going to pick up the pace a little. But before I start, I have to welcome you again to the 55th Annual Wildlife Photographer of the Year Awards. And in the next hour, I'm going to announce the final eight categories, those that we haven't covered yet, and then we'll be unveiling the two grand winners, the Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year and the Wildlife Photographer of the Year 2019. And it's then that we'll be able to head off into that exhibition. So first, let's go underwater. Here we can explore the marine and freshwater animals and their habitats and behaviours. There's a garden in the sea, a swirl of rays and the stunning delicacy of the interconnectedness of that night's aquatic inhabitants. And they together showcase the diversity of the underwater world in very unexpected ways. Now, black water photography has reached, um, what should we say, fever pitch this year. And the ecosystem that you're going to see and the species here are very rarely seen by the likes of us and very rarely photographed as well. It takes technical bravado, vast diving experience, technique, and some you know, dashes of exceptional chance to produce these memorable and powerful images at great depth and, of course, in the pitch black and dark down there in the water. The jury's winner in the underwater category 2019 is this photograph. <laughs> the Garden of Eels, Garden of Eels. This is a tale of strange creatures in an otherworldly place that few of us will ever get to visit. This huge colony of garden eels was at least two-thirds the size of a football field, stretching down a steep sandy slope off of Dawin in the Philippines. Now, over several days, our photographer descended along the colony edge, deciding where to set up his kit, which included a self-designed remote camera system. And these warm water relatives of our cold water conger eels that we have around our shores are extremely shy. And so they vanish straight back into their sandy burrows for several hours the moment that they sensed him. Our photographer placed his housing just within the colony and hid behind the remnants of a shipwreck where he could trigger his photographic system remotely. And day by day, he gradually perfected the setup. And as he became familiar with the eel's rhythms and the path of the light, he began to get the images that he liked. And then, pure luck struck when a small wrasse and a slender comet fish swam through the gently swaying forms. He had his shot, something that the jury had never seen before. The photographer has come back to the surface. He's with us tonight. So please welcome to the stage from the USA, the internationally around David Dubelay. God, what an honor, what an honor to be here in the Natural History Museum. You know, it's, underwater photography is, is collaboration. All photography is, but underwater especially. When, when my partner Jennifer Hayes and I go underwater, we depend on the vision, the dedication of our guides, the people who drive the boats, the people who get us there in the first place, and of course, over all these years, the National Geographic. Collaboration, that's the secret of photography. 
We are all collaborators together. And there's something I do want to say tonight. We are not wildlife photographers. We are not natural history photographers. We are journalists. We are covering the single most important story of our lifetime, in fact, the planet's lifetime, and that story is Earth itself. Our pictures have power. They have the power to convince the unconvinced. They have the power to open all the world's eyes to how incredible, how delicate, how fragile our planet is. Thank you all very, very much. Our next category this evening is animals in their environment. Judging by the number of entries, 7,190, this is a favorite of the photographers. I'll tell you why. If you take a photograph of an animal and it's not close enough for a portrait, it's not doing anything, therefore it's not behaving, you stick it in this category. <laughs> but we're glad that they do because as you're about to see, these are an exceptional set of images. The images that we've got are as you, unforgettable. They show animals very much part of and encompassed within a diversity of wild habitats. Now, invariably, the photographers have first visualized the image and then they've set out to create it. And this has involved both logistical and technical challenges. In many of these pictures, the perspective has an all-important aspect of it, needed to create a composition that is aesthetically strong and still evocative of that place. It has to tell a story of that place. The environment is an integral part of it, hence the title of the category. And these images, therefore, take us to the very heart of the story where animal and environment are indistinguishable. Now, again, when you go next door, along with those macro photographs, I would urge you to take a very close look at this category. There are some quite exceptional photographs, and choosing a winner was tough. But this is that photograph. So what's going on here? Well, a small herd of male chiru leave a trail of footprints on a snow-veiled slope in China. Now, these nimble antelope are only found on that King High Tibet plateau. To survive temperatures that go down as low as minus 40 degrees centigrade, they have a unique underfur, shatouche. It's very light, very warm, but very sadly, it's the main reason for this species' decline. A million Chiru once ranged here, but commercial hunting in the 1980s and 90s has left us with only about 70,000 of these animals. Rigorous protection has seen a small increase, but demand, mainly from the West, for Chatouche shawls still exists. It takes three to five animals to make a single shawl. For years, this photographer has made the ar arduous high-altitude journey to record them. And on this day, shadows flowed from the slopes that the Shiru were heading for, leaving their braided footprints in their wake. From his vantage point, a kilometre away, he drew the contrasting elements together, and the jury was struck by this graphic composition, the way that the tracks lead your eye through the frame. It's an intriguing image with a unique view of a remote wilderness that makes you wonder where their journey will end. Let's hope it ends optimistically and they continue to increase. Please welcome our winner, all the way from China, Shang Zhen Fan. Uh, 
感谢主办方和赛事机构提供这样一个机会，展示我在青藏高原拍摄的当地独有的物种藏羚羊。作作为野生动物摄影师，崇尚自然，珍爱生命，保护野生动物和自然生态，是我摄影的初衷，也将是我众生的追求。谢谢。I would like to thank the organizers and this event for providing me the opportunity to showcase the native species of Tibetan antelope that I photographed on the Tibetan plateau. As a wildlife photographer, I love nature and admire life. Protecting wildlife and natural ecology is the original intent of my work. It will also be my lifelong pursuit. Thank you. Next up is urban wildlife. From fairy tale creatures to the stuff of nightmares, these photographs provide us with the enormous variety of nature that lives in our towns and cities. They make us laugh, they make us squirm, they also make us question the boundaries between what is now urban and perhaps what was the wild. They do remind us that the wildlife pictured here is not intrusive, although it may sometimes seem out of context, out of place, but in fact, its home is now that place which is adapting to ours, our footprint. These animals, we mustn't forget, have become our neighbors. They are rarely, in my opinion, a nuisance. They're something that we should cherish because we have that opportunity on a daily basis to engage with them, an opportunity which we don't so often have these days to engage with wildlife in what we might call the wilder environment. And the image the jury chose as their category winner is the Rat Pack. A cleverly lit, pavement-level view on Pearl Street in New York's Lower Manhattan, where brown rats are scampering about between their home under a tree grill and a pile of rubbish bags full of food waste. Now, likening this shot to blend the glow, the glow of the street lights and operating his kit remotely, our photographer was able to realize this intimate street-level view. Today, urban rat populations are rising fast. They're well suited for city living. They're good swimmers, they're great burrowers, and they're great jumpers. They've got great balance, aided, of course, by their often much maligned tails. Rats are great generalists. They're like carrion crows and foxes and raccoons. They are those species which are more rapidly able to cope with our chaos. Very sadly, on occasion, therefore, we use the P word to describe them. It's not a word that I use in my vernacular. I don't see them as Peas, I see them as great success stories in the natural world. What's so winning about this photograph is the context, the sense, if you like, that the rats are leaving the safety of their daytime burrow to invade our world at night. And they look as if they're hatching a plot as they rush out into the night. On a second glance, though, you can sense their timidity. They are bold and brave in their niche, but as individuals, Rats can be scaredy little organisms. Look at that one paw in the air, seemingly you know, betraying a reluctance to leave the safety of their underworld. It's a great photo of the Rat Pack, minus Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> Here from the UK, congratulations to Charlie Hamilton James. I've been preparing this speech for two or three minutes now. Um, I haven't drunk for 25 minutes. 
in order that I can deliver this beautiful speech. Um, the geographic asked me to do rats for them. I said no for two months because I hate rats. Uh, and eventually I said yes. And so where would you go to shoot rats? Wall Street. So I went to Wall Street and it's full of rats. And after six months filming rats, photographing rats, I sort of liked them, but I didn't love them. Thank you. See, now I really feel compelled to stick up for rats. Charlie, do you know rats can smell cancers? And they're being used to identify particular types of cancerous tumor in humans. They're remarkable animals. There's a rat fancier in the front row. Thank you very much. Next up, the Earth's environment. Each and every one of these images is a timeless capture, conveying a sense of place and a sense of wonder about the grandeur of those landscapes which remain on Earth. Exceptional composition, as well as amazing light, color, texture, form, make these photographs impossible to replicate and difficult to forget. These photographs have mastered these images, these photographers have mastered the images. By seizing this wildness and mood in each one of these places, putting it in that two-dimensional form that we can now relish and enjoy on our screens. And once again, they're an exceptional set when you see them all together. However, the winner this year when it comes to the Earth's environments, is this photograph. <laughs> Red hot lava tongues flow into the Pacific Ocean, producing huge plumes of noxious lays, L-A-Z-E. -A when I saw that this afternoon, I thought, there's a typo there. That's haze, but I was wrong. And I like this photograph accordingly because I love learning new stuff. And I've learned a new word today. It's a geological word, lays. It's a, basically an amalgam of lava and haze. And it's formed when lava enters salt water at 2,190 degrees Fahrenheit. The devil's in the detail. <laughs> and this produces this mix of acid, steam, and fine glass particles when they do crash into, when that lava crashes into those waves. And this was the front line of the biggest eruption for 200 years of one of the world's most active volcanoes, Kilauea, on Hawaii's Big Island. In a matter of days, travelling at speed, the lava had reached the Pacific on the island's southeast coast and begun the creation of a huge delta of new land, and it would continue flowing for three months. Having hired a helicopter with permission to fly over the area, the photographer had a limited time to work, with the aircraft forbidden to descend more than 1,000 metres and with all the toxic clouds of acid vapour filling the sky. So framing his shot through the open door, he captured the collision boundary between the molten rock and water and the emergence of new land and lots of lays. We are seeing massive destruction here through the lens but in an abstract way, turning devastation into something which is undeniably beautiful. It's haunting, it's striking, and together these bring the elements of colour, composition and time into this photograph and make it a convincing winner. Please welcome to the stage, from Spain, Luis Villarino. The 2018 Kilauea eruption buried more than 700 structures and hundreds of families lost their homes. But it also created new land in one of the most extraordinary spectacles I have ever had the privilege of seeing in my life. Humanity is experiencing the greatest 
crossroads in its history. It is up to us to take advantage of nature's creative power or to enhance its destructive capacity. Many thanks to the Natural History Museum for organizing the most important natural photography competition in the world. I would also like to thank the URAP awarding my image. And finally, I dedicate this award to my family. Without them, it would have been impossible. Thank you very much. Good night. Our next category is wildlife photojournalism. Photojournalism, one of the most powerful and emotive categories that we have in this competition. Can you tell a story, a whole story, in just one single image? Can you find connections, share wonder, express hope or horror, and convey cause and effect in that one single image? That's the challenge, and yet when it succeeds, the power of photojournalism. Each of these photographs contains a narrative, whether it's poison, pollution, or predation. These are self-contained stories that grab us, inform us, instill strong emotions, and hopefully, and most importantly, compel us to act. These photographers play roles as photojournalists and artists who develop conversations about important issues and try to connect people through their pictures. These are often hard images to look at, but they can equally be hard images to take. But they provide the critical evidence of what is happening in the world around us, and they may, as I said, provide that essential catalyst for not just caring, but actually taking some real and meaningful action. Our winner, the photograph that the judges felt was particularly powerful, was this one. I'll talk you through it. Under a star-studded Arizona sky, an enormous image of a male jaguar has been projected onto the US-Mexico border fence. Symbolic, says our photographer, of all the jaguar's past and future existence in the United States. Now, historically, the range of this large, beautiful, powerful cat included the southwest United States of America. But today, just two male jaguars are known to inhabit those borderlands of New Mexico and Arizona, and they probably originated from reserves in northwestern Mexico. But with no recent records of a female, any chance of a breeding population becoming established rests on the contentious border between these two countries remaining at least partially open. A penetrable border would be benefit hundreds more species too. The plans, as you know, are not for a penetrable border. And this will have huge human repercussions, and now, as we understand, repercussions for many other species too, totemically identified in this fantastic photograph. It's got a strong conceptual idea, very obviously, but it's got that critical environmental message. And with all the news about this US-Mexican border war focused on the human angle, it's easy to forget that devastating impact will be there for wildlife too. It's a very highly original image. It's been beautifully and masterfully executed. So let's offer our heartfelt congratulations to Mexico's Alejandro Prieto. It's really a pleasure for me to be here tonight. Thanks a lot. OK, more than 1,500 animal and plant species inhabit the border between Mexico and USA. 
This is an incredible biologically diverse region. As the jaguar, 62 other species are critically endangered in this area. Currently, US government is building 162 miles of border wall. And 276 more are expected to build next year. This will cause incalculable damage to the integrity of wildlife population on either side of the border. Beyond politics and borders, more than ever before, it is time to leap big plans and take big actions. Thus, we will be remembered for the empathy we show for the natural world. Thank you very much. Nice to be um, reminded that there's politics in our pictures here tonight as well. Moving on to our next category, it's the Photojournalist Story Award. And this is for a story which is told not in a single photograph, but in six separate images. And this category has been growing in popularity and increases a recognition that conservation storytelling is a critical tool when it comes to exposing rights and proposing solutions to environmental issues. Our first story, which the jury highly commended, is titled New Hope for the Florida Panther. And this is a story about the fate of this rare animal, inextricably linked to the fate of the Florida Everglades. It's a story very close to the heart of the photographer, Carlton Ward Jr., who spent years obtaining unique shots of the panther in the wild and also documenting the threats and pressures it faces by suburban development and collisions with vehicles. It's an example of superb storytelling. So the winner of the Wildlife Photojournalist Award is this. Sorry, I should add that Carlton is not coming up. We're moving straight on to the winning award now, which is our second selection. But we could still give Carlton a hearty round of applause. <laughs> so moving on, the winner this year of the Wildlife Photo Photojournalist Story Award is this sacred no more. The jury felt that without doubt these images were crafted and chosen with care to tell a story that raises questions about our relationship with other animals, the way that we use and abuse them, and how this mirrors our behaviors towards each other, each other as humans. In this photograph, for the past 17 years, Riku, which is a Japanese macaque, which was legally captured from the wild, has performed comedy skits three times a day to large audiences north of Tokyo. Now these highly popular shows attract both locals and tourists. The anthropomorphic appearance of the trained macaques, invariably dressed in costumes, moving around on the stage on two legs, performing tricks, engaging in ridiculous role plays with their human trainers, amuses some, but I'm sure depresses many others. A glimmer of hope. Riku was finally retired in 2018. Let's hope that that macaque is living somewhere a little happier than this scene. Now, this one. At the end of the day, one of the trainers sits in a small bathtub with her baby macaques. And these have been captured three months earlier from the monkey park, supposedly to manage the park's growing macaque population. This photograph, this one defies belief. Switching the lights to red, the tavern owner calls this one sexy time. On cue, a 17-year-old Fuku-chan, the macaque, lies on the floor and starts to touch her nappy suggestively. The small dark room fills with cheers and laughter as the onlookers, cradling bottles of beer, served by monkeys, dressed in checked outfits, watch the macaque's seductive performance. Frankly, I don't need to say any more. What the photographer says is, this image still haunts me. I find it difficult to look at. What do you think? 
Looked on by the tavern owner and his wife, a young girl poses for a photograph with some of the resident macaques. Some nights, this is an after-dinner show with the monkeys impersonating famous people whilst wearing paper mache mask. Other nights, it was a chance to cuddle them and have a photo or a selfie these days with them. And here, the manager of a monkey center in Japan feeds sackfuls of oranges to a large group of wild macaques during a daily feeding ritual. This symbolizes the growing and unsustainable macaque population levels in a now human-dominated environment. And what does that result in? Large numbers of macaques in a human-dominated environment. Well, here's what it results in. Here is uh, a person holding a semi-automatic air rifle. It's a 77-year-old woman, and she's standing beside the rice fields on her farm in Japan, because here, Despite the fact that the macaques have been protected from hunting since 1947, there was a serious decline before that, it is forbidden to kill them. But culling is allowed. And more than 10,000 of these animals are killed annually to prevent agricultural damage. This is not an easy story to tell. As you can tell from what I've told you about these few photographs, the situation is complex. It's intertwined with cultural beliefs which we may see as outdated and unacceptable, but it's up to us to lead the change for these. And all of this is told in a powerful and rich photographic language. It's an exceptional set of photographs. So please, from the Netherlands, offer your congratulations for a brave photographic piece of photojournalism. And the photographer is Jasper Dost. Thank you, Chris. Um, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, how I hate looking at some of these images still today. Um, can you imagine one day you're this sacred animal, you have a religious status, and the next day you're being regarded as a scapegoat or a pest? It's like one day you're in, and the next day you're out. And it seems to be the way we tend to look at animals these days. Uh, animals are being regarded as either being funny, uh, beautiful, super cool to look at, uh, or being a nuisance. And um, with this story, I wanted to bring some nuance to the way we look at animals in general, which has not always been easy. Uh, I had to go to places where I would rather not go, to places where animal entertainment is being glorified, and to places where the intelligence of the species being uh, demonized, but um, I really hope that this story will add some nuance to the way we look at, um, at our relationship with animals, and I hope we can continue uh, moving forward, having a more healthy conversation about that. Yeah. Thank you. The uh, single image that the jury selected to go through to uh, have the opportunity of winning the overall award is this photograph, Showtime. It's a truly disturbing image. The more you look at it, the more you feel, the more you'll think about it. And that's the essence of this excellent collection of photographs that Jasper has produced. Our next category is the Rising Star Portfolio. It's our penultimate category, category tonight, um, and it's for photographers between 18 and 26 years. It's often the launch pad for, to becoming an experienced professional photographer. And thinking back over the years, the young wildlife photographers that we've welcomed onto this stage have, as I said at the outset, gone on to be professionals and to excel in the, at their craft. So this is a great opportunity for young photographers to um, stake their claim and show us their wares. 
What particularly impressed the jury about this portfolio is the way that the photographer has skillfully and consistently handled what appears to be a lack of colour. But of course, it's anything but. And this is what makes the portfolio so beautiful and so appealing. It's a very strong body of work. And in its heart sits a simplicity and fine artistic mastery depicting nature in almost, almost black and white. And when you look through them, every one of these images is compelling. By the serenity, the photographer shows this harsh, snowy environment as a peaceful place, full of beauty and silence, maybe even as a place of hope far away from any human interference. It's a portfolio that took a year in the making, and it's been taken by a photographer that I'm absolutely certain we're going to be seeing a lot more of. So please congratulate and welcome from France, Jeremy Villiers. Good evening. I'm just a witness. Usually my job is to dress in white, to go alone without talking to white places where there is nobody. Tonight I have to dress in black to go to a dark room where there is a lot of body. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I take pictures to express feeling nature offers me but this feeling I can't express it even in my own language. I'm very glad the, the jury uh, like it mm. and welcome this emotion. We are just witnesses, thank you. The image the jury chose from uh, Jeremy's portfolio to go through as a contender for the grand title is this one, uh, which is Frozen Moment. And the pushing against it here are two male doll's sheep, male doll sheep in full winter coats. Um, they're standing immobile at the end of a fierce clash on a windswept snowy slope of the Yukon in the US. Lying in the snow, Jeremy was also battling with the brutal weather. Not only were his fingers frozen, but the ferocious wind was making it difficult to hold his lens steady. And he was so determined to create the photograph, he was unaware that his feet were succumbing to frostbite. We love a bit of frostbite in this competition. <laughs> if you can enter with a bit of frostbite, you're always one up there. It's a great, great photograph from Jeremy. Now for our final category. It's the Wildlife Photographer Portfolio Award for photographers aged 27 and over. And this is the winning portfolio this year. What a joy it is to view this extraordinary collection of photographs of a penguin colony in its natural habitat. You could say that these images record a year in the life of a photographer in the Antarctic, as this is how long it took to get this great set of images of the emperors at every stage of their lives out there on the ice. Now, a portfolio is a hybrid when you think about it. It's an expression of how you see, but at the same time, how you must tell a story. And both elements come together brilliantly in this set of photographs, highlighting a fresh way of seeing and telling a story in an exciting new way. The photographer has succeeded in creating a wonderful level of intimacy in the images, the result of vast amounts of perseverance and patience on the one hand, and a very good photographic eye on the other. And on that account, please summon some more applause because from Germany, Stefan Christmann has come to collect his award.
Wow. <laughs> Um, this is really a dream come true for me, um, and there's only so many things that I would like to say. Um, and I would like to start with the BBC NHU of Bristol, uh, who made me part of the film team that uh, went down to the end of the world and uh, filmed and photographed these wonderful birds. Um, and they did this even though I had no filming experience whatsoever, but I think it turned out well in the end. Um, I want to thank my teammates, Will and Lindsay, um, whom I spent countless wonderful moments on the sea ice with, and uh, who made sure that we kept each other safe in a place that is not always safe. But most of all, I want to thank my wife tonight, because she has waited for me 25 months in total while I was away taking these images. And without her, I couldn't have done it. So thank you so much. I love you. And the judges have chosen this photograph to join the contenders. More than 5,000 male emperor penguins huddled together against the wind on the sea ice of Antarctica's At uh, Atka Bay. Each male bears a precious cargo on their feet, remember. These are the ones that are looking after the eggs tucked in that flabby brood pouch as they face the harshest winter that we have on our planet. The birds are snuggling together, back to the wind, heads down, sharing their body heat and those on the windward edge peel off and shuffle down the flanks and then huddle more on the sheltered side. So there's a constant procession going on in this huddle as the birds move around to ensure that they get their fair share of warmth in the middle. It's a truly remarkable image. So there we are. What an extraordinary lineup of award-winning photography that have moved our judges and which have reverberated with the passion that these photographers have brought to their subjects. Each image has succeeded in telling an impactful story that has the power to induce fascination, curiosity, and emotion to challenge our place in the natural world and our responsibility to protect it. So the jury sifted down over 48,000 entries to their finest 100. They poured over the 19 category winners to elect their grand title winners. But now, before the announcement of those winners, we've got a special presentation to make, and it gives me enormous personal pleasure to make this presentation. I mentioned that I'd been coming to the competition initially as an entrant and a judge and a chair of the judges from about 1983 onwards. And there has been one real champion of the Wildlife Photography of the Year competition so to mark 20 years of absolutely outstanding service and for nurturing this competition, can we please ask Gemma Ward to come up and collect. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> this isn't in the script. I produced it and we haven't got time for this and I don't know what to say, but yes, it's almost 20 years next month um, and I absolutely love the competition. Um, it's the photographers and all of your work and what you do that fascinates me and um, I just want to thank you for contributing all your time and work to the competition and I want to thank the Natural History Museum for having me to stay for 20 years. Thank you. <laughs> One of the best kept secrets in London. <laughs> Genuinely didn't know. 
Gemma, fantastic, fantastic. But now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Who is going to be crowned, first of all, Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year, and then Wildlife Photographer of the Year? So who did the jury award these coveted titles to? Well, first, let's unveil the Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year. From the three age group categories, we can firstly remind ourselves of those three nominees. The UK's, Thomas Easterbrook, with humming surprise. <laughs> Cruz Erdman from New Zealand with his image, Night Glow. <laughs> and Early Riser by Riccardo Marchagiani from Italy. To announce the winner, please welcome to the stage science and wildlife presenter, Liz Bonin. Good evening, everyone. It's my great pleasure to announce this award, this award. And can I say a hearty congratulations to the Natural History Museum for raising the bar, especially in the intro, Michael. I thought that was absolutely stonking. And well done, Chris. You're doing a magnificent job. Uh, so, to this award. It's the purity of the approach and the obvious sense of wonder and curiosity for all of nature's spectacles that always impresses me with the young talent in this competition. Just as our young eco-warriors around the world are cutting through the noise and reminding us all what is really worth fighting for, these images often do the same with clarity and candor. And the winner of the Young Wildlife Photographer of the Year 2019 is Cruz Erdman with Night Glow. <laughs> Um, I'm, uh, I don't know what to say at this point. I remember a little more than a year ago being given my first camera and being told to basically go crazy. And since then, I have felt that nothing has entranced me as much as photography has, and I don't think anything will ever. And after witnessing the climate marches earlier on this year, I concluded to myself not so long ago that if I was to try and make an impact, I would do it through the other end of a camera lens. This is why I am eternally grateful to the museum and its staff, as well as the jury, for awarding me this and making that, that goal seem that one step closer. Thank you. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's the highest accolade in nature photography. It's the Wildlife Photographer of the Year. So we're going to run back through the 16 nominees so you can refresh your memories. First of all, Face of Deception by Ripan Biswas from India. I think a little round of applause as we go through. <laughs> Land of the Eagle by Auden Rickardsen from Norway. <laughs> Germany's Daniel Kronauer, the Architectural Army. Pond World by Manuel Pleikner of Italy. And China's Yongqing Bao with The Moment. <laughs> Germany's Ingo Arndt with The Equal Match. 
Tapestry of Life by Sarika Kovetovic. Snow Exposure by Matt Wall from the USA. The Garden of Eels by David Dubelay, again from the USA. Snow Plateau Nomads by Shenzhan Fan from China. The UK's Charlie Hamilton James's Rat Pack. Spain's Luis Filiorino with Creation. Mexico's Alejandro Prieto with another barred migrant. Snow Time by Jasper Dost from the Netherlands. Jerim Villay from France took this frozen moment. And The Huddle by Stefan Christman from Germany. To reveal our winner this year, please welcome to the stage award-winning photographer winning this competition in 2002, the very wonderful Angie Scott. Good evening, everyone. I was absolutely thrilled and honored to be asked to actually present this award to this wonderful competition. I feel there's never been a more timely moment to draw attention to the beauty and to the plight of our glorious planet. And I think photography has the power to move us like no other medium, as we've all witnessed already on this wonderful moment. As a past winner of this award, I know what a life-changing moment this is. So without further ado, it's my great pleasure to announce the winner. So, the Wildlife Photographer of the Year 2019 is Yong Jing Bao. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I didn't think I would win such a prestigious award. Thank you very much for the organizer and for this event. And thank you, my family, my wife, and all my friends in China, and my parents. I will continue to work in photography um, to make more people uh, know more about the nature and to love and protect the wild animals. Thank you. Well, 
Once again, it hasn't disappointed. We've seen some exceptional images from some remarkable photographers from some amazing places across the planet which have reminded us of just how beautiful our planet is and how fortunate we are to, at this point in time, to be able to still share that planet with all of those species that we've seen tonight. Many congratulations to our winners and to everyone that takes part in the Natural History Museum's Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Um, if these images and photographers have inspired you to pick up a camera and go out and take a view of the natural world, then we hope that you will enter next year's competition. And you can do that from Monday. <laughs> Little top tip. When you go on Instagram and you look at all of those photographers' pictures, which I do every single day, don't copy them. Because the judges and the jury have already seen them. If you want to succeed in this competition, like so many of the photographers we've seen tonight, you need a new eye. You need to look at something in a fresh, unique way. You need to take something from it and respond to it personally. Put that emotion, that connection, into your photograph so that it's visible to the viewer almost instantaneously. Something that it's easy to say, but that it's incredibly difficult to do. But we love a challenge. So it's worth having a go. Um, we're going to move off shortly. Uh, we can move in this direction down to the ex exhibition. I urge you to look at all of the photographs. You will also be, have, have the opportunity to have some pudding canapes. I never, they're, unless they're Angel Delight and Bird's Instant Whip, <laughs> I have no idea what a pudding canapé is. I look forward to, to meeting those. Um, and then you'll get a, a unique opportunity to look at the exhibition before it opens to the public on Friday. I'd like to say one thing before we go. I think this is the first time in all the years I've been coming that I've heard so much from the podium, from the various speakers and the photographers themselves about a deep-hearted concern for the plight of our natural world. It's always been there, of course, but now it's very much at the forefront of our minds. That's heartening. That's a source of optimism. The problem is, so many of us in this room have known about the plight of our planet for all of our lives. Some of us watched it in black and white in the 1960s. We heard about our rainforests coming down, our oceans being polluted, our fields being exhausted. And I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, it's on our watch that it's decayed more rapidly than ever before. So can I ask you to recognize the urgency now of this condition. We've heard a lot of talk this evening about generating care. I would argue that caring is no longer enough. We have to take action. And on the streets of London for the past week, a body of people, Extinction Rebellion, have been taking action. They were described as uncooperative crusties. I've been with them. Am I an uncooperative crusty? Don't answer. <laughs> I've been with lawyers, farmers, doctors, nurses, teachers, scientists, grandmothers, grandfathers, a 92-year-old man out there in the rain and the cold every day. Ladies and gentlemen, Extinction Rebellion are not uncooperative crusties. They are the visible conscience of our world at this time. I would urge you, if you have any opportunity during the remaining part of this week, to support them in whatever way you can, whether that's speaking to them on the streets and encouraging them under difficult circumstances, potential arrest, cold, wet, short of food, continual harassment, abuse on social media, or maybe share their vision on social media. Because whatever you think about their methods, they are generating a degree of drama which is ensuring that we are having to confront this issue. An element of tension which means we cannot ignore the issue. The time for action is here. And history will salute those who take it and not forgive those who sit on the fence or stay indoors. Thank you very much for your attention this evening. Enjoy the rest of it, and certainly enjoy those photographs. Thank you very much.
welcome back. Well, there we have it, our grand title winner. Matt, did the judges make the right decision, do you think? <laughs> God, it's such a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> it like, is a really tough wouldn't one. Wouldn't love to be a fly on the wall in that room when they're kind of in the heat of the battle deciding which picture out of tens of thousands to choose. Um, Absolutely. I can really understand why this was chosen. You know, we've talked about it already, the, the raw power, the energy, you know, the distance between the animals, the story, the slight, you know, comedic face of the, of the marmot. Um, and then also, you know, in these images so much can go wrong technically you know where the focus point lands you know there's no annoying blade of grass in the way <laughs> um it really is perfect so um yeah congratulations to the winner it's mm -hmm. um quite an achievement can you imagine how good he feels right now oh. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Well, I, he, I hope so. He deserves to. <laughs> <laughs> Our judges uh, commented that this was quite simply the perfect moment. And I think the, they, the, they uh, commented that the more they looked at it, the more they saw, which I absolutely agree with. Yeah, t t t absolutely. The more I look at this, you know, the, the, the better it gets. Um, and, you know, going back to what we were talking about before with that, that flat lighting, you know, mm. you see all beautiful detail in this of course you know camera equipment has just improved tenfold since the digital revolution around about 2004 2005 and you know we wouldn't have been able to see images like this you know relatively recently you know 10 12 years ago so that's really helped of course it's enabled photographers to to, to get good pictures but this photographer again with field craft with patience mm. with persistence um, that hard hard work and that graft has really enabled him to capture this picture so um, yeah Knowing I'm thrilled his, to see his, it. his subject as well yeah, very much. Yeah yeah, yeah it, it's so important you, you you really have to know your subject and and I think that's often what you know can perhaps sort out the wheat from the chaff in wildlife photography that you know those who you know don't have that kind of work ethic in going back over and over again learning studying you know looking at other photographers uh, and really putting in your time is is how you how you get the winning shots. This image, um, it, it really tells a story, doesn't it? Is, is that key, do you think, to a, to a winning image, being able to tell a story? It is, and probably one of the hardest things to do in a single mm, picture is, is, is tell a story. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've got to go back into my superlative bag <laughs> again to talk about this. Um, but the relationship be be between the predator and prey here mm. is, is one of the best you know, elements to this story. And that question again of, you know, what happened next you know how did this animal get so close you know the reaction of the marmot you know and it's it's surprised expression or is it calling um is it you know i'm sure it's you know full of fear mm. adrenaline you know the fox has this kind of sinister look it on its does, face it does. there's just, just so much going there's so many stories and i think that's what's one of the great things about this picture is you can look at it for a long time and 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 try and figure out what's going on and uh, that's what makes it so impactful it's a wonderful, wonderful image and a, a well-deserving uh, winner, I think. Um, this initially, when I first saw this image, I, I, I didn't quite react to it in the way that I do now. But the more I, I've looked at it, the the more I've, I've come to love this image. And I think it is probably my favourite of, of, of all of the entries this wow. year. Wow, yeah. And, and, and it was great also hearing the story behind mm. the picture. And it's one of the lovely things. It's one of the things I love about the exhibition is, you know, of course, they're, you, you know, everybody has to come and see the exhibition because they're beautifully backlit. It's the best way of viewing the pictures. Mm. Um, you really see them in such good detail. And then, of course, the captions showing, you know, the behaviour information, the technical information and the conservation information. And it's a very rich experience hearing the story behind the picture. So Absolutely, everyone yeah. must come and see it. It adds so much to it. Um, and now, of course, we have our young winner as well, Cruz Erdman. And again, do you, uh, correct, correct uh, 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 judgment, do you think? Wow, well, it's, uh, it's, again, you know, being, I'd, I'd love to be a judge, you know, mm. to, 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 <laughs> see, to see what goes on and all those opinions flying around. And, um, uh, and, you know, and, and the previous image, you know, there were two winners. How long were they in the room deciding? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the joint winners for behaviour mammals, and yeah. Completely. But going back to these, and uh, the you know two very very different subjects. Mm. Um, I think, I mean, who knows? You know, the technical challenge behind this one, maybe it's a little bit more tricky. You know, being where it is, like I'd mentioned before, you know, to be a really good underwater photographer, you have to be such a great diver that you're not even thinking about your diving, and then 
to capture this animal, you know, showing this behavior, showing this color, it's, it really is quite extraordinary. And, and it's a nice choice as well because it's something quite different. It is, it's beautiful. The, I think what really impressed the judges uh, with this image was the, uh, the technical skill that, that this young photographer, photographer is showing, which, it, it, I mean, it is remarkable. And the fact that it's underwater photography as well. Yeah, that's right. Getting, you know, lighting, of course, is key to, to so many pictures. And when you're in complete darkness, you know, how do you balance mm. your exposure yes, correctly? Course, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, using these big uh, housings and, uh, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, all the settings on your camera, you really, really have to know your stuff. So uh, an exceptional level of skill uh, to capture this, to even get into the position to capture this and then, great opportunism um, mm -hmm. to press the trigger at the yeah. right time. Massive, massive congratulations to Cruz, well deserved. Now, uh, Chris Packham was our host for the award ceremony, did an absolutely fantastic job. I think we can hear from him now. Uh, it's been a wonderful ceremony, Chris. Um, what do you think of this year's entries? Well, I mean, I've been coming here since the mid 80s when I used to enter myself and, and then I've judged it and I've been the chairman of judges. So I've attended many of these events. They're always a splendid, you know, splendid evening. I mean, look at it. It's a magnificent place. It's always great to welcome photographers from around the world and basically champion their work. Very often these people are working in remote places on their own. They don't get pats on the back of this grandeur and, and stature. So that's always good. But I think this year very clearly stands out as the year when Pretty much everyone who took to the stage, whether they were guests or speakers or photographers, was aware of the fact that their photos needed to have a message. And the message was that we have a very beautiful planet, but it's in deep, deep trouble, and that we have to do something about it. So I, I mean, I always leave these events, you know, as a photographer, sometimes, you know, wishing I'd taken those pictures, a little envious, um, and equally inspired, there's no doubt about that. But this time I'll leave with a, a greater sense of optimism than ever before, the, the, the essential message, and that is that we urgently need to address all of the issues which are impacting so negatively on the planet, has been voiced and understood and spread by this collection of people. So, you know, I'm, I'm giving tonight a very high 9.9 .9 out of 10. Well, it has been lovely. And, and what do you think about the role for things like exhibitions in uh, pushing these, uh, these messages and this awareness to an audience that's a bit wider than the people in this room? Yeah, no, I think it's absolutely essential. I mean, this is the great and the good celebrating the great and the good, and they're great and good at what they do. But what they really want to do is for not us to enjoy their pictures, but the world to see those pictures. And that is the key thing. So the exhibition now, which we're about to enjoy, will open on Friday. But it's not just based here at the museum, it tours the world. And it gives a lot of people opportunities to see these photographs. They'll be widely printed in magazines and newspapers. They'll be all over the internet uh, by tomorrow, I hope. And it's that sharing of their passion and their commitment, but also their vision and the collective sense of urgency that I mentioned, which is really, really important. So no, exhibitions, that's what it's about. It's about communicating. I mean, if these guys go out there and, and women go out there to satisfy their own you know, desires to take the perfect picture, I mean, in my heart, that's what I'm always after. But it's a picture, and a picture is being created but with a purpose. And the purpose, as I say, is increasingly to communicate that desperate need to look after the world and not just document the last days of it. And I know that it's difficult in a field of such beautiful and moving images, but if I had to press you to pick a favourite, would you be able to? Yeah, I could pick a favourite. Um, I'm not saying it'll be the same one tomorrow morning. I mean, I haven't had a chance to let them all sink in yet. And even then, when I look back at previous favourites in previous competitions, I change my mind. And I think that that's what we should do. We, we mature as individuals. We have different tastes in food and music and art and, 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 and whatever it happens to be. But if I were to pick one now, the one that had left me with the most impact, it would be the bison in the snow. I love the simplicity of it. I love the imagination. The fact that I could see that the photographer saw the image before he took it. So he therefore exercised his technical skills to, to make that. I like black and white images. I like the reduction uh, of that medium, i.e. there's no color there. It makes it easier to access. And I, I ultimately like quite minimalist pictures. I, I struggle with things which are chaotic. So perhaps it's because I, I need them to be in, more instantly accessible. So yeah, if you, if you were to say to me, which picture you know, would you most have liked to have taken? 
at this point in time it would be the, the bison. Not the most glamorous location, not the most glamorous species, but for me, I, I just love that photograph. Beautiful. One, one final question. We're here under Hope for Whale, which is a symbol of our hope for our relationship with the natural world going forward. How hopeful are you right now? Well, I am hopeful. I'm hopeful because of Extinction Rebellion and the youth climate strikes and those marches. I think for the first time in my lifetime, we've had people standing up and saying, you must listen, you must act. And they've been doing it en masse, and they've been doing it in a non-violent, peaceful way, which is essential in order to succeed. Um, so I find that really inspirational. At the same time, they're having to do that against the backdrop of perhaps the worst political climate globally that we've had in terms of a desire to rectify the problems. So there's a bit of an irony and a paradox there. I think, hand on heart, that ultimately we will have to go through a bit more pain before we get our act in order. Uh, we have a toolkit and an ability to solve so many of these problems. It's out there, it's just not being implemented rapidly enough and broadly enough. Um, but I think that when, you know, people like here in the UK in their cosy little bubble start to feel climate change and the effect of climate change and human population growth and biodiversity loss, when it, when it hits them in one you know, way or another, then they'll wake up and think, do you know what, we've got to sort it out. And our job in the interim period is to um, try and slow the juggernaut of decay, apply some triage, put on the elastoplast and make sure that there's enough left so that when we get it into the operating theatre, we can fix it up and carry on. And I think we'll probably do it, but not without cost and discomfort, which is disappointing. But ultimately, the human being is a, an intelligent, resourceful and adaptable animal can't see it giving up the ghost without a jolly good fight and I for one I'm going to make a valiant last stand you know well so tomorrow I'll, I'll be doing it on the streets of London despite the fact that apparently it's all been declared illegal well frankly I'm more interested in ethics than law at the moment when it comes to expressing my desire to communicate that you know I would need for change well I too hope that we can put our resourcefulness to good use thank you so much Chris and I'll let you enjoy the rest of your night all right good night good night well, that brings us to the end of an absolutely fantastic evening. Massive congratulations to all of our finalists and to our winning uh, images. Thank you so much to Matt for your excellent punditry this <laughs> evening. Fantastic to have you along. A real treat and a <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. Now, our exhibition, the Wildlife Photographer of the Year, opens this Friday here at the museum, so do go along. It's well worth seeing those images in situ as they were intended to be seen. And, of course, next year's competition opens on the 21st of October, so get those images in. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you next year. Wildlife Photographer of the Year is the gold standard uh, for photo competitions, especially obviously when it comes to natural history and conservation photography. This has always led the way in terms of authenticity and quality. It's that standard of excellence. The award ceremony was just great. What an amazing event. Of course, the venue, you can't get a better place than the Natural History Museum great way to showcase photography. You know, the movie industry has the Oscars and wildlife photography has Wildlife Photographer of the Year. The Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition, it, it's such a great way to reach an audience that I normally wouldn't reach. The sheer diversity of people from all walks of life, I don't think you can beat um, that level of exposure. That's why I enter.